Hello, hello! Oh, we live. I can never get the camera angle right. <sighs> Come on, man. It's just, it, 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 it doesn't have like a very strong clip. You just kind of have to balance it. It's really weird. I can't exactly show you because the camera won't bend around to look at itself, but yeah. How are we all doing today, fellas? How are we all doing? Is the audio balance okay? I don't know if I'm too loud, if the music's too loud, you know, can you hear both myself and the music decently? Is, is it good? Um, hello everybody, I see Cadet, I see Nubit, I see Trom, Livy, thank you all so much for joining. It is an interesting topic to discuss, I'm glad you agree, because I didn't feel like doing a debate direct this week again, and I wanted to do something, and I want to do a proper debate, because we haven't done that in a while. I don't want to be wish-washy and only do tier lists and, you know, video game related stuff constantly. I want to do some proper debates. This is what Debate Direct was founded on, okay? It's too soon to be doing another Would You Rather, alright? We do something with a bit more depth. From humans to animals, how is everybody? Very nice. I wonder if you have any pets. Any pets watching this? Or any non-humans watching this? Animals. Welcome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, welcome, 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 Cadet, I know what you mean, literally. When I start the stream, on my phone, like, I, for you guys, like, watching the stream back on my phone for the, like, you know, playback and chat and stuff, uh, the stream page, it still has the waiting for Mr. Matt, like, for 30 seconds after I hit go live, and then it just, like, refreshes automatically, and it jumps up to, like, not the start of the stream, but, like, partway through. So, yeah, I don't know why it does that, but, you know, as long as you're seeing, you know, this is why, this is why. One of the reasons why I have like a two to three minute intro screen, just so that we're all on the same page, just so there's a little buffer time for people joining, you know, uh, you know, stream lag and like, you know, checking the tech issues and like, you know, that kind of delay, all of that kind of stuff. It's really important that I don't just immediately start with my face cam and stuff. It also gives me extra time to get ready. Um, you know, sometimes I need like a whole five minutes and that's fine, depends on the length of the stream. This is going to be a shorter stream, so it was only like a two minute intro. Um, this stream's probably going to be like an hour and a half. If I had to guess, I don't think we'd hit the two hour mark, we'll see. But there's a lot to talk about, and depending on how much discussion I have from others, it could go on for quite a while. Hello Diamond Chef, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello Dead Cat. Very, man, you know how to make yourself stand out. Completely black profile picture, but block camp's username with underscores in between. D-E-A-D-C-A-T. Pick a random number, one to six, why? Ah, Jesus Christ, I'm so confused. Uh, but welcome, welcome, everybody. I had the same camera, just put some clay under it, and it works flawlessly. Alright, Chef, good idea. That's actually a really smart idea, noted. You have the exact same camera? Damn, I had no idea. So, fellas, welcome to Debate Direct. It's been too long since the last episode. It's supposed to be every week, but I miss weeks sometimes. I'm really sorry, but there are a lot of audible streams to do that I could easily slot into Sundays recently anyways. Um, let's get on with this. So just reading out, you know, today's, um... You know, today's uh, stream description. You can see here, you know, today's charity shout out, you know, the QOTD. Uh, as always, the like and watch hour goal. Uh, I'm going to move that back down, actually, the, you know, to the standard. 30 hours of watch time. You know what? Uh, 15 likes, and I will do another stream before next Sunday on Debate Direct. Ugh, don't, what am I doing? I'm just going to sit here. So. Today's title is, How Far Should Laws for Humans Apply to Animals? Have you ever thought about it? Society has created rules and laws for humans to prevent and reduce suffering and cruelty and injustice. But what about animals? What about other species? How is it different for them? Should they have similar laws or very different laws? Should they have any laws at all? Animals are living creatures, intelligent ones too, but they're not humans. Where do we draw the line for domestic or farmyard or even wild animals? Join me today as we delve into this unique topic. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you fellas, I didn't do my homework for this one. Normally, I do my homework. I'll turn the music down just a bit. Normally, I do my homework. I get like a set of articles for everyone to read ahead of time. But I, this is an idea I've had for so long and I didn't really know where to start with it, which is why I didn't do it sooner. So I just thought, you know what? Let's just do it and let's just go in blind. Let's just talk about it, our first thoughts on this and then look at some articles, because literally, 15 minutes ago, I decided to just Google the question, and then I realized I should have put animal rights in the title specifically, because it is about animal rights. And I've seen, I've found a bunch of interesting articles from a variety of perspectives, uh, which I am gonna read through and just chat about, and yeah, just wanna see what you guys say. Now, no one wanted to join this stream. No one was interested in uh, joining the stream, which is a bit of a shame. So what I'm actually gonna do is just go solo, fly solo, 
and you guys can talk to me via chat. However, at the end of the stream, if anyone is interested, I will open up a mic on the Hydration Nation, my Discord server. I'll just go into, you know, a public voice chat, and anyone can hop on uh, and, you know, voice their thoughts if they so wish. Oh god, don't use Pata. Uh, I will be using Pata, but I will not just be using Pata on its own. I'll be using a variety of... Of sources. All right. I want a comprehensive analysis of this. I want to know what everyone has to say on this issue. Uh, and yes, uh, jokes aside, I am aware that PETA is not exactly uh, the paragon of justice that they claim to be, but that's a whole different issue. Okay. If you guys want to talk about that, we can. I can't say I'm the most informed on it. Um, I just know that PETA is involved in like animal cruelty on a mass scale in some way, and it's like a, like a complete. Like, scandal. I don't really know, to be honest. But, yeah. I didn't realize you asked people to join the stream. Oof, guys. I posted it the same way I do every time. Um, you know, everyone should see this. Everyone on mobile, at least. If you go to my channel, community tab, this should appear in your subscription feed. I actually made a post just there, ranked to hydrated games. Debate direct collab opportunity. I, you know, I post these, like, every single time. I put polls here. I do all kinds. And, for those of you who prefer to use the Discord, like, literally everyone, it's like... Everyone unanimously uses the Discord server. It's like the only social media I need. No one uses the Instagram. No one used the Twitter and the Reddit back when they were a thing. I posted it here as well. Like, you know, last night. No, that's a different post. That was the... Yeah, it was this one. I posted it last night. I posted it like two days ago, actually. Um, I try and do these ahead of time. So, you know, it, it's right there. Enable pings if you haven't already. Otherwise, you'll miss out. Uh, that's all I can really say. I try and provide... You know the best experience with notifications and whatnot because I know YouTube isn't the most reliable So I do things by hand. I even have Instagram notifications for the one person who uses those maybe <clears throat> And I've forgotten to use that today. Oopsie, but like uh, I don't know what to say <laughs> But yeah dog cat, okay sleepy welcome everybody welcome 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 so I'm just gonna get straight into this and just send me messages Debating my points and debating what everyone else is saying. I, I'm not going to start off with any kind of argument I'm just kind of reading and learning as I go for this one This isn't gonna be like most debates where I have a you know I've already settled on an argument in my mind at, before the start of the stream which I reveal at the end and I show off after the start. No, I'm actually gonna do a learning experience on this one I am gonna be learning new information as I go. I've skimmed the articles I've got, but I haven't gone in depth and I haven't constructed my own arguments yet. So I just want to learn and go along with you guys because this is a really interesting thing that I've never talked about. Okay. The community tab is weirdly set up when they embed on Discord. I want to tell you, man, it's a hyperlink and it goes to a page. Uh, has anyone else been having issues with like the community tab post in any way? Do let me know. I don't know if this is just trauma or if this is a wider problem. So. What rights should animals have is basically what today's arguments, what today's topic boils down to, alright? I went and, you know, literally just googled how far should laws for humans apply to animals, and then I searched animal rights. I found three articles for that first question from a variety of perspectives, then I found four, including one from Peta. Uh, you know, and some really good learning resources, um, you know, uh, you know, regarding, um, the, you know, animal, uh, you know, but animal rights, basically. And I actually want to start with the last page here. For those of you who don't know, this is BBC Bite Size. This is the national, national, like, standard for UK education online. I used to use this site a lot, like, five, ten years ago when I was still in school. It is a really good website. Very informative, unbiased, really educational, doesn't hold back from teaching kids about, you know, the realities of the world we live in without, you know, putting a, you know, coloured attitude on everything, at least in my experience. I, this, again, it's been so many years since I actively used this site, they've revamped it a couple times, but the purple and orange is still here. It's a pretty good website as far as I can recall. You didn't have notifications on? Guys! Guys, it's simple. Uh, ignore this, by the way, I'm doing another stream tomorrow, which I've made public. Guys, when you go to a YouTube channel, for example, 8 Ryan, hit that bell! Put it on, ball. I, like, it, I, I can't, like, I don't know, I, I don't want to, like, keep repeating this and be a complete sour, but guys, if you haven't got the bell on, what are you doing? Because, you know, you'll get notified of my streams here, but if the bell isn't on, you'll have to go to your subscription feed, and you might be subscribed to hundreds of channels, and dig, and dig, and dig through them. There's a ton of videos, channels I'm subscribed to, which I don't really watch that often, because 
I didn't have this enabled, you know? So, I I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know? But anyways, uh, man, the music's- I feel the music's still kind of loud. Anyway. So, I'm gonna stop by here. I'm gonna stop here. <laughs> Alright. Shout out to Notification Squad, by the way. Hell yeah. Dead cat's got the bell. Nice. I've never met you. Alright, so I don't remember your- I don't remember who you are. I've never seen that username and profile picture or lack of before. But yeah. It's working for Nuba, okay. You didn't do your homework, I'm eating to detention! W cry about it, Livy. <laughs> so what, I'll just use detention time to do something more productive in my life. LOL. Hey, Trump's been watching Dying Light 2? Nice! Nice, I've been watching it as well. I don't have the bell on, I just go to the subscription feed. Nuba, Nuba, you gotta have the bell on, man. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I actually have no idea why I'm subbed to you, lol. I, I bet- <laughs> Are you just one of those people who just like- didn't ring the bell and has just discovered my channel for the first time in like a year. Just go to my channel, check it out. Unsubscribe if it's not for you, alright? Anyways, enough chat about this. I want to get on with the debate. So, animal rights. What is meant by animal rights? Just we're on the same page, alright? Um, many people believe that all living things should be treated with respect. They believe animals have the same right to be protected from ill treatment and exploitation as humans. Most people believe humans are capable of more than other animals. For example, they can make decisions about what is right and wrong and may have religious beliefs. This may mean that animals are not equal to humans, but also that they should be looked after and carefully protected as a part of the natural world. So, obviously this is UK based, but if I was to open another tab here and just talk about this. To make sure we're all on the same page, like, I'd be a bit concerned if you guys hadn't heard of this. Uh, but human rights are moral principles that have been normalized in theory, across the world, and are, like, you know, basically a set of standards of human, you know, human, you know, um, like, rights. Basically, there, there, there's these, like, doctrines, there's these principles, these inalienable, you know, unarguable, I don't know what the right word is, just these, these rights. Basically, all people are entitled to specific rights, um, according to these kind of generally agreed moral principles and norms. Sadly, they are not accepted everywhere and are malpracticed by pretty much every single government. <laughs> but uh, basically, what it comes down to is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This idea of human rights, shockingly, has only been around for less than a century in all of our thousands of years of existence, it's still pretty new. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was like a, a formalized treaty agreement created by the United Nations in 1948. It was a response to the events of World War II. There's a bunch of history you can read about here, but basically, yeah, the UN, the United Nations, which is like everyone except like two countries, uh, agreed to, you know, follow these like agreements and not violate, you know, these like, you know, human rights, otherwise it's like an international crime. A lot of people have lied about this, of course. Um, but yeah, um, sadly, in reality, human rights aren't really followed to the letter, like not even slightly. The United Nations is like no real power because it's so watered down by the interests of different nations who are still arguing with each other that it, like never actually does anything. This is just what I've heard. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the most informed on this, but human rights are really a theoretical principle that should be applied in the real world, but sadly aren't. You know. Things like all people are entitled to, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, you know, uh, basic necessities like food, water, shelter, that kind of thing. Those are, those are human rights, um, you know. And like, I don't know if this is some kind of hot take, but I believe that everyone is entitled to human rights and that no one should be deprived of them, ever, no exceptions. Even like mass murderers, you know, okay, maybe, maybe limit their freedoms since they're in prison, but you know. Let's not get into the nitty gritty now. The thing is, like, like we, we have rights that are like standardized for humans, right? You know, killing a human is wrong. Stealing from a human is wrong. So what about a human with an animal and it's like, is it wrong to kill animals? Is it wrong to steal from animals? Is it wrong to uh, like steal property from animals? Can animals own property? Now you might start to see where we're getting at, all right? So there are some you know, real life laws, you know, that have changed our history about animal rights, you know, uh, going back, you know, not that far, surprisingly, only, you know, 100 years at most, 200 years, uh, but, you know, prevention of, like, you know, cruelty, you know, registration required for, like, you know, circus animals, you know, using animals to, like, fight for gambling is, like, you know, illegal, like, you know, 
cockfighting, dogfighting, bear fighting, that kind of thing's like illegal now. They, you know, the Roman Empire, under the Roman Empire, there used to be like a big form of entertainment, but it's illegal now because it's considered like cruel to animals. You know, you need a license to go hunting for like badges, for example. Um, you know, testing like, you know, medical and like, you know, like sanitary like products on animals. You know, you have to be like licensed and there have to be like, you know, regulations and checks for this kind of thing now to prevent cruelty to animals, basically. Uh, you know, certain, like, hunting is illegal completely. Animal owners are obliged by the law to provide basic needs to animals. You know, they can't, you know, animal abuse is illegal. And, you know, it's funny, because some of my charity shoutouts are actually specifically connected to this kind of thing. Uh, there's an inherent bias in all of us, for good or evil. Uh, if I look at, oh, which charity was it? The National, no. RSPCA. Here it is. Yeah, we gave a shout out to these guys just a couple of streams ago. Remember the RSPCA, Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's charities like this. Uh, you know, in addition to actual like government, you know, uh, like in you know legal like regulations that actually you know do work to you know prevent and reduce you know cruelty to animals. And you know, um, we're talking wild animals, domestic animals, farmyard animals, all of them. All right. Um. But yeah, this is not any particular argument, I'm just stating the facts here. There are a number of laws in the UK designed to protect animals from cruelty, alright? It's basically what it is. Let me actually enlarge this so you guys can see it a bit better. But yeah, basically, there's like a whole act and everything. You can read the details for yourself. I'm going to link all of these into the description once the stream's done. So I'm going to actually start by uh, linking this one. If I just uh, put this in live chat so you, don't, you guys don't have to refresh, boom. I'm going to link these in the description as like, uh, I'm going to just call them sources. So, it was like the articles, and uh, yeah, um, you know. How does society try to prevent the rights of animals? So, you know, there's a lot of things people have done over history to protect the rights of animals, you know, campaigns, you know, awareness groups, uh, supporting certain programs, like supporting breeding programs to ensure that endangered species don't become extinct, you know. That's a more general kind of environmental protection kind of thing. But like, I hope you guys are kind of getting the gist of what I'm like getting at. Some people choose to be vegetarian or vegan and individually they refuse to eat meat or anything that's produced by an animal so that you know they're you know not you know complicit in you know the slaughter of animals for food or you know whatever. Um, and yeah I mean sadly the statistics speak for themselves. Uh, I don't know if this is out of date but um, they're probably not that out of date. 2.5 million farm animals are slaughtered each day in the UK. We kill them for food. It's just facts. You know, chicken, pig, you know, cow, steak, you know, pork chops, sausages, all that kind of thing. It all comes from these guys. You know, we, we give them a stab and, like, process the meat and shit. You know, there's been a 65% increase in animals abandoned since 2007 2012. That is just an atrocity. God, I fucking hate this government, man. Um, yeah. That's just like a, a whole different issue because again, like this is farmyards. We're talking about you know wild and stray like dogs, cats. You know, like uh, you know, like what's the word domestic or I, don't know, I guess not domestic animals anymore. Th only three percent of people in the UK are vegetarian. Three percent. That is a tiny proportion. You'd think it'd be a lot more, but no, it's not that popular. There's also been a 40% increase in animal experiments since 2000, which is, you know, pretty concerning. Animals, you know, it's a very slippery slope. Experimenting on animals, uh, I mean, it has decreased with some, obviously increased with others. And, you know, like, you know, what exactly are these experiments? Are they, you know, ethically done? You know, are the animals treated well? The animals suffering? Because that's what it comes down to, really. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uses of animals in society and history, you know. Um, you know, we eat animals. Some animals are used as, like, assisting people, you know, dogs for blind people, like, guide dogs, you know? Some animals carry goods for people, like, horses or elephants, you know? Uh, some people keep animals for sport, like, dog racing, you know, greyhound horse racing. Um, my dad actually gambles on, uh, horse racing. You know, he, uh, oh, what's the phrase he uses? He, uh, 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 manages financial investments into equine futures. This is very clever. But, yeah, um, you know, that's the thing here. Uh, fashion accessories or leisure, Le leisure <laughs> words. I was gonna say leather because some animals are skinned for handbags and stuff, you know. Um, snakes, you know. Uh, maybe some of the furry ones like tigers. I don't know. Uh, some elephants are killed for ivory, which is used in like chest sets or uh, you know, um, like I don't know, 
what's the word? Uh, not merchandise. Where's the word merchandise coming to my head? Jewelry. That was it. Jewelry. So there's a lot of things that animals are used for. All right. Science experiments as well, and also like you know circus acts, you know entertainment. Uh, for some reason, it's talking about Islam. <laughs> I have no idea why. I don't think religion is particularly relevant to this. Uh, bit of a random inclusion. I'm gonna skip this because I don't want to delve into religious stuff right now. Uh, basically, different religions have different doctrines about animal rights. We'll get into that if you guys want, but it's not particularly. It's not really, not really relevant. Uh, gotta be real with you, Chief. Uh, it's not what I wanted to look at. Um, and there's a case study here. So yeah, this is obviously for, for like a school study. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm actually going to read out this case study because it's moral dilemmas like this which are really interesting to look at this. In 2012, a Dorset farmer, Brian Pittman, was found guilty of failing to look after his herd of 90 cows properly and causing unnecessary suffering to one animal. Eight animals died right to be put to sleep. So, killed. Pittman was fined £505 and banned from keeping cattle for two years. The court heard how he failed to feed his entire herd adequately and did not treat or seek veterinary treatment for sick or injured animals. Pittman had faced 19 charges and pleaded guilty for two charges relating to animal identification for disease control. He was convicted of causing unnecessary suffering to one cow, which was found collapsed and underfed in a field by inspectors and had to be put down. The carcass of another cow was found nearby. Five animals later died because they were so sick. In his defense, Pittman said he struggled to take care of them because he had been ill. He said only six or eight of his animals were unwell and that was down to infection, which he had treated. Pittman said after the sen sentencing, this will cause hardship for me. So, you know, it's just interesting to uh, just, I don't know, look at what happened and, you know, question about that. I'm going to get into these now. There's a bunch of different, like, takes. Some of them are pretty extreme. Some of them are not. Uh, and I just, I just want to just look at them all, really. I don't like that this was the first one I found, but I think I'm going to roll with them in the order that I found them, other than the bite size thing, because, you know, I want to experience this with you guys. So, yeah, just catch up on chat for a little bit. Um, what are you saying? What are you saying, people? Mr. Matt as our teacher, please. Both of my parents are teachers. I could teach, but I wouldn't teach very well. If you could be any FNAF character, who would it be? <laughs> Seriously? Uh... Uh, that's not really relevant to the stream, but it, uh, I don't know, uh, I, uh, Chip from Into the Pit, like, he's not involved with, like, any, no, I'm trying to think of characters who aren't involved with, like, any of the murders or nasty stuff, no one who dies, just random, I'll be the random, like, background character, I'll be one of, like, Oscar's friends from Out of Stock, I don't know, um, yeah, I won't. Nobody spoiled Darling 2 because I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. It's very good. Thank you, guys. Uh, age old question Can my dog own property? <laughs> right. Cockfighting. Oh, shut up. Oh, man. I see the thumbnail for next year was Six Nights at Minecraft. That's not what it's called. But yeah, call it Project Minecraft. I'm sorry I can't come up with a decent title, but I finally dropped that one. That title sucks, but I had to come up with something. But yeah, uh, killing another human is wrong, and yeah, animals can kill other animals because they need to survive. Indeed, DJ. It's a, you know, makes you wonder, okay, so murder's illegal, right? Why can animals murder other animals? I mean, there's a good, decent argument, I think, for and against. If Peppa Pig and Zootopia have taught me anything, yes, animals have rights. I'm just kidding, by the way. There's no way I'm going to base my opinion on these things. I don't know, Lu I almost called you Lucy. Jesus Christ. Livy. I don't know about Peppa Pig, but Zootopia was supposed to be a social commentary on animal rights, I'm pretty sure, so I think that's actually not a bad source to use. It is a movie, obviously, but yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, not sorry, but I love eating meat. Steak is so good, and you shouldn't feel bad about that. Or should you? We'll get to that. But that's just the result of the UK, right? Yes, DJ, it's just the UK results. No doubt, statistics will be even worse in your country. America! The most third world, first world country. Oh man, I feel bad for you, but yeah, it could, it could be worse, I guess. At least you have freedom. <laughs> I want to adopt all abandoned animals and give them a home, but thus I cannot. There are too many of them, stupid people. Yeah, it's not your responsibility, Nuba, to sort out every single animal in the world. We as a collective need to work together to sort out these issues. Alright, Dead Cat, I will see you around, buddy, in another year. I'm from Texas. Yeehaw, McDonald's! <laughs> Yeehaw, McDonald's! Oh, that's brilliant. I don't know if any any of my viewers are from Texas. That's already cool. Yeah, exactly, DJ. Exactly. Global results will probably be even worse. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna look at a few uh, different takes on animal rights, and I just want to talk about them and just see what you guys think of them. So, 
Animal Rights versus Human Rights, Writing a Wrong, a Daily Reckoning Special Position Paper by Jim um, um, right. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. I'm gonna need someone to tell me. Whiskey and gunpowder, sign up free today. The fuck is this? Sorry, there's just a random advert at the start. I have no idea what this website is. I've never been here before. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Animal rights versus human rights, a lazy passion. So this is what Jim Boy has to say. Alright. This is just Jim's, uh, take. Um, so. Often their agendas are completely built upon misguided premises and outright misconceptions. Who? Wait, what did it say? My beat revolves around domestic political hopper and issues? I, I'm very confused. Who's they? Uh... Who? <laughs> Someone's gonna poke a hot stick in the eyes of these extremists because when they get their way, which is more often than not in this political client, we all lose some of our freedom. What is this guy talking about? I feel like I'm really missing context. For example, a few issues ago, I took aim at basic flaws of the science of modern extreme environmental lobby. A group of passionate, albeit lazy, non informally would have given their way cause far more harm than good. Why is this in block caps? Is this some tabloid rag? Like, this doesn't feel very, uh, academic. Let's just watch. So, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Who? Who is this guy? What, what group? What individuals? It doesn't say. I thought that... <laughs> Okay, I deadass read that as lean. I read that as lean instead of lent. Holy shit. Uh, okay, so we're gonna talk about animal rights. What more fitting time to talk about the rights of animals during a time when fewer of them are being eaten than any other time of the year? My headphones just ran out of battery. They're starting to beep away. Hold on a second. Oh, that's annoying, but I can sort this out. I've done this before where I've actually managed to balance my speakers in a way where the stream audio isn't like crap, but my headphones have run out of battery. That sucks. I've only been streaming for like 30 minutes, man. 30%, so it runs down 10% per like minute, like 1% per minute. That's ridiculous. All right, there we go. There we go. Right, hold on. I'm gonna need to check the audio balance here. Um, I have no idea if this is too loud or too quiet. Hold on a second, lads. All right, I hope the audio I hope the audio balance is good. I'm gonna turn the music down just a bit. I'd rather it be too quiet than too loud. Tell me if there's an issue. Let's get back to it. So, okay, I scrolled down to the bottom for some reason. So, who's this guy talking about? I, I still don't know. Um, so Lent. I don't know if you guys know what Lent is. It's a like uh, Christian thing. What more fitting time to talk about the rights of animals than during a time when fewer of them are being eaten than at any other time of the year? There's also another reason why now is the time to make my point. This is also the season that's furthest on the calendar from the time of year that animal rights debates typically rear their heads, the full hunting season. Above the objections of at least one of my co-editors, distancing this topic from the hunting debate, believe it or not, a separate issue, is a conscious decision on my part. Why? Because when to by that, it took the idea of actually killing off the table, cool more reason heads will prevail when I hit you with this. Animals have no rights! Not naturally anime, I mean... They do, though. Animals, like, they, I mean, depend, it depends. That's not factually true on its own. I feel like that definitely needs clarification. I mean, no. Rights don't exist naturally. They're all human-made. But they do have rights in most countries, I would say. Definitely a lot of Europe, Western countries. I can't speak of my so I really don't know what's going on over there. Um, animals have rights. What do you want about? But now, before you dismiss me as a heartless barbarian, know this. I've always believed that relationships between people and animals, whether based on companionship, work, simple nutrition, are some of life's most rewarding and character-building interactions. I also believe that pet ownership is a wonderful institution for both man and beast. But for anyone to believe that animals have inherent rights is to show an alarming degree of ignorance as to what the term really means. Yeah, please, educate me. I'm confused. Here's the crux of the issue. No rights of any type exist naturally, duh, by virtue of birth alone, obviously. In the natural world... 
In the natural world, all or any creature, man included, has a right are to those things that he can take by force or forcibly defend from being taken. More on this read. Thomas Hobbes Leviathan? Are you seriously citing Thomas fucking Hobbes? Oh no. Oh no. I've studied that. I actually know what that is. Oh my god. Sorry, the political philosophy course I did in history for my first year was the most boring thing I've ever wasted my life on. Oh my gosh, Thomas Hobbes. Who, who next? We talk about John Locke. Maybe some, uh, what was his name? Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Should we talk about Rousseau? A fucking mad lad. That includes life itself, brutal but true. I mean, yeah, obviously, but we live in a society where we've actually, you know, built civilization for humans to live where we don't have to, you know, act like animals. We are capable of reasoning and, you know, we've we've actually built laws to protect the weak, you know, the, the, the vulnerable. What, what, what is this guy on about? This is not what I expected. Being accustomed to the concept of unalienable rights, so artfully articulated in our own Declaration of Independence, a lot of Americans... Oh, I thought we were talking about the world. Why are you just talking about America? Declaration of Independence? Not, you know, the... Uh, Oh, what's it called? The Declaration of... It's just Declaration of Human Rights? Like, not a declaration. It is a declaration. What is it called? Like, Human Rights, like, 1946? No? Okay. Um, I forget what it's called exactly. A lot of Americans are programmed to believe that simply because we're of the genus and species Homo sapiens, we're issued rights as original equipment. Well, we are, you know, because we've agreed to. Sadly, this is not true. Despots and tyrants through the ages have crushed the notion of humans under chariot wheel, mace, and tank tread time and time again. One need only look at Rwanda, China, and other places for vivid modern-day proof. That is true. It's not universal, sadly. It should be, but no. It's all down to the governments and the, the people in their own countries. Some, some, some dictatorships are obviously ignoring those completely. Uh, still living in the 12th century, you know, but... Clearly, though, some human rights, some human beings have rights. Americans and the citizens of other democracies are joined them in abundance. How do we get this right if they aren't naturally ours? By a simple contract, one we never signed, yet are automatically both bound to and protected to as a part of our citizenship. Root oh my god. Oh my god! I called it! He's citing, like, all these political philosophers from, like, centuries ago. Oh my god, guys, uh, I can't explain it to you well because it was the most boring topic. He cited Rousseau. Russo and Hobbes, two paragraphs apart, who next? Alright, we've got to make a prediction here. We've got Hobbes and Russo. He's probably not going to mention John Locke, because he had, we had quite a different um, perspective on it. Then again, oh, I get them all mixed up, maybe, maybe. I'm going to predict John Locke, I'm like 50-50. Um, how much do you guys want to bet he's going to mention Aristotle? This article is not what I expected. Okay, I'm going to keep reading, because I want to learn, I just want to see what these takes are. This guy's basically saying, you know, human rights obviously don't exist in nature. They're completely artificially created by a contract that everyone is automatically bound to, one that we never sign, one that, you know, all humans are entitled to both, you know, uh, enjoy the benefits of and respect, you know, uh, not violating, basically. But it's not Rousseau's social contract. It's, it's the Declaration of Human Rights that was made by the UN in 1946. Rousseau social contract from like hundreds of years ago. No one, no one agreed to that. <laughs> This contract is the root of all laws protecting you from harm, protecting others from harm your hands. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Price of these rights under this contract is certain types of freedom. Yep, basically we forfeit our natural freedom to kill or pillage our weaker neighbours in exchange for a guarantee against similar brutality at the hands of our stronger ones. Exactly. Exactly, it's a great thing. To whom do we forfeit our most basic freedoms to and bask in the protection of? A sovereign state, in our case the US of A. Uh, I say again, it's our citizenship, not simply our humanity that guarantees rights. That's why most of them stay at the border when we enter our countries. Yeah, no, this guy's talking in practical, in practicality. It does come down to the country you live in. You know, the US of A is not going to respect your rights the same way Germany might. Or, you know, Iraq. <laughs> I don't know. China. Uh, they're all very different. <laughs> What's this to do with animals? Bear with me, no pun intended. Regardless of what PETA and the rest of the animal rights crowd says, more on this in a minute, no critter from Aardvark or to Zebra is capable of understanding and honouring such contracts as the ones that guarantee citizens of democratic republics their rights. Even the intricate societies some apes, as advanced as social as they are, are fundamentally based on the only natural law there is, the law of force and dominance. And this is absolutely true. In nature, it is survival of the fittest. You know, before humans had, you know, evolved to build, you know, the complex civilizations and social structures we do now, you know, we were just like animals. We would just, you know, kill and be killed. And it was just, you know, whoever was the strongest 
and whoever had the most force, you know, would win um, in nature. And obviously we still see that today with, you know, wild animals. They don't have, you know, <laughs> lords. They don't, you know, write, you know, contracts that they're animals. They don't have, you know, they haven't evolved to be capable of that. So the only true rights enjoyed by any animals are those extended to them by people. Pets, work beasts, zoo creatures, and the like are granted protections by humans from the perils of the state of nature, the elements, predation, starvation, disease, in exchange for their ability and willingness to be trained to serve our needs. It's, you know, a, a trade-off, basically. So, you know, uh, animals get protection, and in return, they do what we want them to. Um, animals are used for all kinds of things, as we saw earlier in the, you know, uh, bite-sized thing. So... <laughs> This is a rudimentary contract. Now, they, uh, I think I know what this is going. Here's the thing. It is a rudimentary contract. There's, like, there's legislation about, like, prevention to animal cruelty, but there's no binding contracts animals, you know, sign to say, ah, yes, uh, in return for, you know, um, letting you ride me to travel from place to place, uh, you will give me food. You know, that kind of thing. Such is the case even for livestock, which are bred, fed, medicated, and cared for until such a time as we, the granters of their rights, decide the contract has inspired. Simple, right? But animals rights activists, an almost exclusively liberal province, by the way. I don't know what he means. Liberal province? Is there, like, m other definitions of province? Because liberal has a political definition, which I think he'd be referring to, but, like, a, pr a province is, like, a geographical area. Maybe it's a metaphor. I don't, I don't know. So animal rights activists perceive that simply by virtue of birth, every organism everywhere is endowed with the same rights as citizens of the most progressive democracy. Which one? The most progressive democracy. That's probably like Norway? Or maybe um maybe Sweden? It's one of the Scandinavian countries. I do you mean just democracies, period? Because there's, there's, a, there's a lot of them. I'd, I'd say, in terms of progressiveness, uh, most democracies in the world are around the same place. They're democracy in name. They're really kind of conservative oligarchy. <laughs> okay, I'm just being cynical, but I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's, it's definitely flawed. Um, they naively rewrite the rules of nature, glossing over the fact that animals grant no rights at all to each other. Among animals, might makes right. There are no such things as privacy, equality, due process, equal protection under law, property boundaries, or anything resembling the compound structures that we reasoning humans have put into place to safeguard our rights. This fact alone proves that animals are incapable of honouring the basic contract necessary for the existence of rights. So, this actually does go back to um, a lot of the uh, political philosophy that um, Thomas Hobbes wrote back in, like... What was it, the 17th, 18th century? I don't remember, guys. I studied it, but it's kind of vague in my mind now. It was a really, really boring topic. It's super dry. Basically, what he's saying is that, you know, um, animals haven't evolved to have the reasoning that we do. They don't make laws. They don't have complex social structures. Uh, but animal rights activists believe that animals deserve the same rights we do, despite the fact that, you know, in reality... Um, no such, like, you know, rules are practiced between animals to animals. And then animals to humans is an interesting one because it's very one-sided. Obviously, animals, you know, aren't capable of, you know, thought as the same way humans are. So, you know, we provide them rights while also having complete control over them. It's kind of, you know, I'd say it's a fair trade-off, but I could be wrong. I mean, it really depends. There's a lot of different situations, a lot of different examples um, that brings up the kind of debate over animal rights, and it's very interesting. So, um, how's that for irony? Those that champion animal rights in the name of humanity are themselves quite animal-like, in that they can't comprehend the nature of what makes rights possible. Uh, okay, this guy's clearly very biased. He might be right, but still, be aware that there is a very strong bias here. Um, I don't quite know what he means. Animal rights activists are themselves animal-like, in that they can't comprehend the nature of what makes rights possible. Okay, no, I get it. That's quite funny. So, regardless, their viewpoint has continued to gain traction over the last 20 years in the mainstream on both sides of the Atlantic, whether it's the guiltless grill section of a major chain restaurant's menu, the cruelty-free label on cosmetics, the I'd rather go naked than wear fur nude supermodel poster campaign, not entirely without its merits, I must say. Wait, what, do you, what does he mean by that? Why is this one specifically the one that is not entirely without merits? Oh, oh you weirdo. He sounds like a Redditor, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Redditor, but <laughs> not that kind of Redditor. 
Are you seriously? Because I've seen that campaign and um, the Instagram comments were not on like those of a Twitch live chat. My God. <sighs> Don't be that guy. Or the recent British ban on traditional fox hunting. I remember that. That happened a few years ago. There was a British ban on traditional fox hunting. Yeah, there was... That was a thing. The plight of our four-legged friend... The plight of our four-legged friends is everywhere these days. How does this affect you and your rights and freedoms? This is an interesting thing. Animals to animals, humans to humans, completely different, right? Animals have no rights. They live in the state of, like, you know, survive the fittest in nature. But humans, we are very complex, you know, so we all this to prevent injustice and cruelty. How does it work from animals to humans and humans to animals? Well, if the most extreme agenda of the militant animal rights fringe got its way... Yikes, I didn't know that existed. I guess, of course, it does. And I don't mean the local cat club here. I'm talking about PETA, the Fund for Animals, the Humane Society of the United States. Not the same folks that run your local animal shelter, by the way. And others. Are there multiple petters? I'm confused. I don't know about petters. I have heard bad things about them. But if uh, the extreme animal rights fringe and others got their way, the following things would be illegal. Eating meat of any kind, keeping pets of any species, hunting, fishing, and falconry, animal testing and experimentation, removal or extermination of pest animals, zooed wildlife film theme cars and animal shows, killing or relocation of dangerous nuisance animals, horseback riding, racing, rodeos, polo, and other equine sports, using animals for work or service, including seeing eye dogs. So it's pretty interesting. It's like, okay, are these good or bad things? Like, what should and shouldn't be legal? It's a really interesting debate to have. Quite an impact on our lives there, absolutely. This would completely change. That top one alone would completely change everyone's lives. This isn't even considering the negative ramifications of a meatless life I would have on a health, lifespan, and economy, of course. And you thought the animal rights card was only worried about spaying and neutering pets. True, animal rightists would forbid it, in fact. Um, yeah. But that's not the case at all. Despite the mainstream staying with leftist Hollywood, uh, Hollywood has a leftist? A what? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not American. This is clearly written by an American for Americans, so if the Americans in chat could clarify some of the context, because I just, I, I have not researched this. I don't live in the USA. I, I don't know what it's like over there. Uh, I'm, I'm British. Oh, I'm British! Uh, but despite the mainstream's portrayal, consistently sympathetic portrayal of them, hardcore animal rights advocates will not hesitate to strip you of your real rights to convey them to beasts that cannot possibly comprehend them. That's not true. The mainstream doesn't the mainstream media, if anything, it's not this extreme. I mean, this is uh, one guy talking about an extreme in a fairly an extreme way. None of this is reflective of the mainstream in any way. That's just not true. I feel like, I, I don't know. I think this guy's got a lot of things right, but I think there's a lot of things wrong. I should, really shouldn't put my opinion on this yet, but it's interesting to see the viewpoint because this is very, very biased. I can say this itself is body on extreme, but really all he's saying is like extremist bad, which isn't really saying anything like who does who disagrees with that you know look there's much more to say about this topic of course you can count me to revisit the issue again later this year and just like i did with the environmentalists a few weeks ago i was showing you why the efforts of these lunatics would be positively disastrous to the welfare and quality of life of the very animals they're trying to protect I'll also expose you to the unbelievable truth about how the purported designs of animal rights advocates are in fact best served by their political arch enemies hunters but until then hoist a hunk or two of healthy meat this guy really he's got a problem man this, this is kind of like, he's just ranting about extreme animal rights activists. I mean, I guess, like, I think, I feel like this is missing the, the, the point of the issue, though. Then again, no, this is really good from a certain point of view, okay? What I think of this, this paper, I think it's really interesting because it's pointing out, you know, the contrary, right? Obviously think, well, you know, animals shouldn't have to suffer cruelty at humans. They might not have evolved to have the same, you know, level of thoughts and feelings we do, but they do feel pain. They do feel suffering. You know, we should do our best to prevent them from that just because it's ethical, and I agree. But, like, this guy's pointing out what happens when that goes too far and how that not only impacts us and actually, you know, starts putting animals above humans, which is kind of silly, if I'm honest here, uh, and, you know, pointing that actually, you know, the concept of rights is completely, you know, theoretical and human created and artificial. You've got to remember that in practice, reality is sadly different, you know, and taken too far, this would actually be bad not only for the society and the economy of humans, but actually for the animals themselves. Um, humans would be banned from even helping animals and doing positive things purely, um, you know, under the extremist kind of ideas. So I think it was really good of him to point that out, but I feel like it's very unprofessional. This reads like a tabloid. I don't know what this website is, but man, I don't know, man. I get the feeling this guy is some, you know, south, like some southern conservative 
you know, you know, I don't know, I'm, I should make assumptions, but I get a really bad vibe from this. It's a shame, though, because he's making a really good point, I think. Um, it's very interesting. I don't agree fully, because I think he's talking about such a tiny minority. It really has no relevance to anything in the real world. There's so few that, you know. But then again, look how the alt-right has, you know, made a comeback since 2008 in, you know, mainstream politics. Maybe he's right. I think it's worth being aware of these kind of things, though, so... That's all of that from Jim, whatever your last name is, Jim Boy, Whiskey and Gunpowder. Uh, what do we think of that one? Let's just talk about each perspective one at a time, right? Let's go through these. What do we think of that um, perspective? I'm just going to read chat. Dead Cat, I thought you left. Um, so just reading through all of chat. Um, I'm from Texas, yeehaw! Why am I getting a feeling this article seems a bit off? It's just a bit biased, just a smidge. He's, he's definitely got a very uh, <laughs> strong point of view. Web developing's boring, so I'm going to stick around. Cool. Is anyone else here from Texas? I don't know. There are so many people who've come across my channel, but there's also way more places in the world. I've, there's probably like one other person who's been from Texas who watched my stream. I have no idea. Like a lot of the people I know from the USA are specifically in one time zone, like on the like east side, like New York, you know, um, Tennessee. Tennessee? What am I saying? Uh, Ohio. Uh, what? No, there's a city in Ohio which is something like Tennessee, but it's not Tennessee. Tennessee's completely different. I'm getting my US mixed up. What's on, like, the, the right side? I'm thinking of all the ones on the uh, east. Ah, forget it. West. Whatever. But yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm trying to make a QRT that makes sense, but just can't format it right, and the character limit is not helping because I want to type it all at once. Livy, just do it in parts. I'll let you do two or three parts. Just don't make it too long, you know. Um, but yeah, Livy's British. YouTube's character limit is short. Uh, I think it's all right, actually. I think it's all right, but yeah. Uh, no, dude, you're the only... There's only... Uh, I mean, there's only two other Americans in chat. You know, Nubit's from Poland, Livy's from the UK, I'm from the UK. You get a real variety in here. We're not all Americans. Uh, but yeah, uh, I actually think Germany is better, right? So you'd be spot on. I've actually been uh, reading, or should I say listening to a book lately called Why the Germans Do It Better, written by John Kampfer. I've been listening to this on Audible. I'd recommend it. It's not the best book ever, but it's definitely a good starter for someone like me who has like, studied, you know, British and, you know, uh, culture and history and wants to look at Germany's a bit more. I don't want that to fall off. Uh, but yeah, um... But yeah, I mean, transgender people are actually allowed to go into bathrooms in Germany, so Texas doesn't allow that. What does that even mean, though? Which bathrooms do transgender people go into? That's a whole different issue I don't want to dig up now. I have no idea what it's like in Texas, but I imagine it's not even recognized, so which is not allowed. I mean, the whole reason bathrooms are separated is because of uh, genitalia, like, you know... The, the bathrooms are built for the different sexes. It's not based on this new gender idea. So, but you can't say, well, the trans man should go into the female bathroom because, you know, they have a certain, you know, bodily structure, which the toilets are more suited for. But you can't say that because that's like offensive or something. So I don't know. Oh boy. Don't, don't talk to me about trans people. It's just going to be confusing and everyone's going to be upset by the end of it. But yeah, uh, because of a single state, you can't say another country is better, right? Because Texas is just one of like 50 states. So this is just Texas, not the USA as a whole. Again, there's a distinction there because you've got federal laws, but then also state laws. It's a complicated thing. Um, I'm so happy I'm not in the South. It's always the part of the country with a bad reputation. I know what you mean. I know the stereotypes. I'm not saying Texas is all bad, but my God, some of the, you know, I mean, look at the history. But yeah, it's for security purposes. I have no idea, dude. Yeah, I've been keeping that in mind while listening to you reading this article, ain't you, DJ? God damn, my keyboard sounds hollow. Give me some water, we can watch some YouTube on a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, innit? Give me some water, I've got some water in here. A bottle of water. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's nothing inherently wrong with being conservative, it's just that I tend to disagree with a lot of things I say, because people who are conservative tend to also be pretty bigoted, in my experience. That's just what I think. Like, there's some conservative values are great, but, you know, on their own... It, yeah, they're actually pretty harmful, I think. It's just what I think, though. I could be wrong. Um, exactly. So, yeah, what do we what do we think of this article, guys? You know, um, are there any animal rights activists in chat? Do you guys think animal rights activists do take it too far in the mainstream? Or, because here's what I think. Here's what I think. Okay, so this guy's clearly raving about an extremist group, which, you know, 
He's made it clear that it's a fringe group, so I don't think it really has much bearing, but I think it was worth putting out there to point out that you can have too much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing can go far. I'm still not sure yet, but you know, while we as a species, in many cases across the world under different programs and charities, do save animals from extinction, we, you know, hold entire programs costing, you know, thousands, millions of dollars or whatever currency of taxpayers' money or, you know, you know, for charities, like, you know, kind of give us something. Not really taxpayers' money that much, I'd be, to be honest. I'm not really sure how much governments really do compared to charities, but whatever. Like, people's money goes towards, you know, um, conservation programs in the wild, you know, protecting animals from going extinct, you know. Zoos! We talked about zoos in a previous debate! This perfectly ties in, I've just realised. We talked about that kind of balance of safety and freedom in another debate as well. It's like, okay, we give animals all of these kind of, you know, Safeties we you know for animals that are going extinct or even just domestic ones like your cats or dogs We feed them we make sure that they are healthy and alive We give them a place to go to shelter if they need to sleep somewhere. We give them somewhere that's safe um, And you know a relative amount of freedoms too, but like We also have complete control of them the safety there is strong But the freedom isn't you know these animals uh, a lot of animals say you know in uh, aquariums or you know um, in the wild. Would we be better off just letting them roam free, letting them do as they please, rather than confining them to, you know, um, you know, like, cages or whatever? Hell, with farmyard animals, um, you know, obviously people are obliged to keep the animals well fed and make sure that they're, like, living in good conditions, and in many cases they're not, and it's tragic, and I've seen videos of this, like, there are all kinds of places in the UK and other countries still where animals are completely mistreated in farms, you know, put into far too small spaces to save costs and just, you know, slaughtered in a really messy way. But, you know, that's the thing, right? Even if they're treated really well, it's like, oh, it's very green. We, you know, have these wide open spaces for these chickens to live in and, you know, um, we make sure they're fed properly and they've got space and that they're actually happy and socially engaged with chickens obviously not like humans but still animals do have some basic kind of you know um you know uh like like you know but well, they do have feelings they are capable of feelings and thought in albeit a more basic way than humans and you know it makes me think like okay us giving them all these protections does that give us the right to slaughter them for food does that give us the right to, you know, um, not abuse them, but use them, uh, you know, for entertainment, to force them to work for us, like, a, you know, a dog helping a blind man, you know? Um, and then there's interpersonal relationships, because it gets more complicated. You know, let's say that example, you know, a blind man has a dog helping him. Okay, the dog didn't sign a contract to agree to this, did they? But what if the dog and the man have fostered a very close relationship that's lasted for years, effectively making them friends. Some people, unironically, make friends with animals. And animals are, you know, family members in a way, like, you know, the household's pet cat, pet dog, is regarded as a family member, like another child to the parent figure or whatever, you know? Like, <clears throat> if there's, like, that kind of, like, you know, friendship, that, does that mean it's mutual? Does that mean the pet agrees to, you know, serve the human? I, I, it depends. Um, something which my girlfriend Lucy is always saying to me when, uh, that she wants to do, that she is, you know, has to happen, which I'm, you know, I have to go along with when we grow up and go in a house is that, um, you yeah, know, when we live together, is that she wants one or two pet cats because she's always been around a cat in her life and cats mean a lot to her and she can't imagine life without one. She loves them. Um, luckily I have no problem with this. Uh... Lucy won't have a problem with me talking about this publicly, I don't think. She's been very public about it before. Lucy has a very specific phobia. I forget what it's called, but it's called a fear of pregnancy. She really, 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 really doesn't want to have children, and she doesn't like the idea of, like, giving birth or anything like that. It kind of freaks her out. And I don't blame her, because it's kind of gross when you think about it objectively, but... You know, even if we change our mind, decide to adopt a human, like, um... She, <laughs> she'd rather have, like, furry babies, as she calls them. Cats. And, you know, that personal attachment, that really makes me wonder, like, okay, so there's another aspect to this. What if, you know, there's a personal bond between the human and animal? The animal might not be capable of reason like humans are, but they are capable of vaguely, you know, bonding, right? That is possible. That has happened. There are stories of humans, like adult humans, who have gone back to the wild to find a wild animal, like a, like a, a boy, you know, when he was young, bonding with, like, this tiger, like a wild, ferocious animal, and then going back, like, 20 years later to find them, and them still recognising each other, and, like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
those are, I guess, exceptional circumstances, but I think they're worth talking about. And again, just going back to chat, what do you guys have to say? Okay, you're all talking German. I'm going to be real with you, Chief. I suck at languages. I can't speak German. I don't know what Yo Hablo Espanol or Deutsches Besser means. Um, I'm, I studied German for one year and French for 10 years, and I never got anywhere with any of them. Let's stay on track, please. <clears throat> If dogs are fur babies, babies are skin dogs. <laughs> skin dogs. <clears throat> skin puppies. But yeah, what the fuck is going right? Come on, guys, please. Um, this is what I do. I try every once every like 10 episodes, once every three months, I try and do a serious discussion with Debate Direct. And this is all I get from chat. I get furry baby skin dog puppy. Yo hablo espanol means I speak Spanish. All oh, right, okay. That makes sense. <sighs> is anyone engaging with what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I try and do fun debate directs that will easily appeal to people because, oh, look, it's got FNAF on it. But, like, I, I want to have some real, like, discussion on it. I actually want to do something, like, pretty intellectual. And it's like, no one engages with this stuff, man. It's kind of disappointing. The best I'll get is, like, a voice chat with, like, five people who will, like, say one thing in the stream. And then Lucy will just carry the rest of it because she's, you know, actually, like, well, pretty wise despite not being very academic. God damn. Ugh. Where are the people my age who've actually, like, studied history, man? I, I, I need to find them. Let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next topic. All right, we've talked about that one in depth. Let's talk about another article. So we're just going to read these, right? We're just going to give these a good old read. The argument for animal rights. How are those rights different from human rights? Advocacy groups and humanitarians alike have long argued for the rights of animals around the world, fighting for the right as sentient creatures to a life free of torture and suffering. Some advocate for not using animals as food, clothing, or other goods, and others, such as vegans, go even as far to denounce the use of animal byproducts, period. In the United States, again, always US-based, people often say that they love animals and that they consider their pets to be part of the family, but many draw the line at animal rights. Isn't it enough that we treat them humanely? Why should animals have rights? What rights should animals have? How are those rights different from human rights? The fact of the matter is that since the US Department of Agriculture issued the 1966 Animal Welfare Act, the UK also has one, I'm pretty sure, earlier with the bite-sized thing, the Animal Welfare Act, even animals used in commercial farming are entitled to a certain base level treatment. But that differs from the wants of animal rights activist groups like People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA. So that's what PETA stands for. I've never, I never realized that's what PETA stood for. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or the more extreme British direct action group known as the Animal Liberation Front. Let's see what they got to say. Animal rights versus animal welfare. The animal welfare view, which is distinguishable from the animal rights view, is that humans can use and exploit animals as long as the animals are treated humanely and the use is not too frivolous. To animal rights activists, the main problem with this view is that humans don't have the right to use and exploit the animals no matter how well the animals are treated. Buying, selling, breeding, confining, and killing animals infringe on the animals' rights no matter how humanely they are treated. So, the distinction here, animal rights versus welfare, um, <clears throat> basically, guys, you know, the same with, like, the social welfare, like, in politics, social welfare programs, the welfare view is that humans can use and exploit animals, you know, we can farm them, you know, we can kill them for food, we can, you know, keep them as pets, we can, you know, use them for science and experiment on them, as long as it's not too frivolous, as long as they're treated humanely, and the specifics of this are outlined in, you know, real-life law programs, that's kind of like the establishment, like, view in the world right now, that, you know, animals are entitled to welfare, but animal rights activists take this a step further and say that it's all, like, too much. Humans shouldn't be doing anything... <clears throat> against animals will buying selling breeding confining killing animals even if they're treated humanely even if you know the farm animals were slaughtering for you know your pork chops even if they were treated humanely and you know <clears throat> you know um like you know weren't injected with like you know chemicals to you know fatten them up or whatever even if they weren't like you know didn't have anything significant on actually done to them the animal rights activists say that this is still wrong and that killing animals is you know should be illegal period and that you know confining them in any way, any kind of pets, the extremists, as, um, uh, our friend Jimboy said, I have to call him that, I don't know why it's in my head, I just can't pronounce the last name, so it's Jimboy now, as Jimboy said, uh, you know, to some extremists, you know, just owning animals at all as a concept is, like, you know, wrong to them. Now, not all animal rights activists are this extreme, but some are. So, 
Furthermore, the idea of treating animals humanely is vague, and it means something different to everyone. This is the thing. What constitutes humanely? What is the criteria for rights? It's got to be more specific. And that's where it gets into different countries, different laws, different, you know, you know, declarations and programs. Uh, but we are really delving into the theoretical and the kind of, like, you know, doctrines with this stream. So I hope you guys can at least engage with that. But do take into account the real practical factors. I think it's all important. Um, so, for instance, an egg farmer may think that there is nothing wrong with killing male chicks by grinding them up alive to cut costs, for cut feeding costs versus yield. Also, cage-free eggs are not as humane as the industry would have it believe. In fact, a cage-free egg operation buys their eggs from the same hatcheries that factory farms buy from. And those hatcheries kill the male chicks as well. So they're just shifting the blame. The idea of humane meat also seems absurd to animal rights activists, since the animals must be killed to obtain the meat, right? It's murder, it's slaughter, but it's murder of an animal. It's not the same as murdering a human. Cannibalism is frowned upon, but eating animals? Pff, go wild, we've been doing it for millennia. Um, and for farms to be profitable, those animals are killed as soon as they reach slaughter weight, which is still very young. Um, and again, there's different, you know, legislations about this. Um, I don't know what the specifics are, but again, is it okay to kill animals for food if they're children, or should you wait till they're an adult? What constitutes adult for a chicken? It's X many years. For, uh, you know, a cow, it's X many years. You know, and those specifics, um, I would recommend for anyone trying to work this out, look to the science, ask the scientists, look at the biologists, the profile, the pro bleh, profiles, the professionals, the experts, the researchers, what do they say, you know, about the specifics of biology? There was an article which uh, mentioned something about something neuroscientists found out, I think it might have been the next one, um, which is something very important, which I want to read. Was it about neuroscience? Where is it? Was it here? Neuro? Science? Ah, oh, we'll find it. We'll find it. Oh my gosh. No. Wait, what are you- what are you doing? <laughs> no, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, please go. Stop it. Cut it out. What are you doing? Uh, anyways, I'm just gonna keep reading this article. Hello, Lucy! Hello! How you doing? Yes, uh, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, guys, I know they keep coming up. We'll get to this, all right? We'll get there. We get there when we get there. I'm not putting these in any particular order. They're in the order I googled them, and I have to say, Woe to anyone who Googled this and only looked at the first result, because that was a very biased article. I had a good point, but very biased. Kind of not really how I'd write about it. This is a lot better. This is quite nicely balanced. Very informative. So, it's called tree hugger. Interesting. Very radical, actually. Tree hugging is a crime, I'm pretty sure. Why should animals have rights? I'll read chat when I'm done with the article, okay? So, why should animals have rights? Animal rights activism is basically the idea that animals are sentient. Yep, here it is. Here it is. Neuroscience is exactly what I was looking for. Animal rights activism is based on the idea that animals are sentient and that speciesism is wrong, the former of which is scientifically backed. An international panel of neuroscientists declared in 2012 that non-human animals have consciousness, and the latter is still hotly contested among humanitarians. So, I mean, I could fact check this, but I think it's pretty clear that all animals, to a limited degree, have consciousness. They have thoughts, they have feelings. I'd say the most intelligent animals, like dolphins, cats, dogs, are kind of on the same level as maybe a very young human, like an infant. So think of them like babies, in terms of, like, what they're able to think and feel. I think, I think, like, you know, where do you draw the line? Okay, so you're not gonna, you know, treat bacteria that way, because they don't even have conscious thought, but, like, elephants, horses, chickens... I would say they do, and the science is there to back that. And you can do your own research, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, an international power of neuroscientists declared in 2012 that non-human animals are consciousness. So they're conscious, they're conscious animals. I mean, that's a pretty vague statement, to be fair. Like, that's really broad. I'm gonna assume it's talking about like, mammals, the kind of ones that we farm and stuff, because like, experiment your bacteria, no one's gonna bat an eyelid. All right, but yeah, I mean, is it speciesist? Is it, you know, racist to other species if you were to say, humans are, empirically speaking, superior, uh, because we've evolved to have reasoning. I wouldn't say that's speciesist. I'm not just saying that because that's something I genuinely believe. I think, just objectively speaking, we're built different. <laughs> you know, humans are built different. That's not to say that, um, there is absolutely any, like, excuse for cruelty to animals. I'm just saying 
we're the dominant species of the planet, we're the only species on the planet to have evolved to the point of complex, you know, communication, actual language, being able to build, you know, we're basically the player in Minecraft. The mobs, you know, aren't able to, well, I guess they are, but, but like, you know, humans uh, are way ahead of any, like, no species has really come close. Uh, before this biologists come in, I know that, like, yep, spiders can build webs, bees can build hives. I'm talking about, like, building houses. I'm talking about using science, coming up with a periodic table, mixing and matching elements, creating entire studies of chemistry and history and literature and all kinds of things to explore art and science and, like, Human, humans are built different, okay? That might be speciesist. I'm not sure. Maybe being speciesist isn't a bad thing. I would probably say being speciesist is a bad thing. But again, it's all up to debate. I'm really not sure, which is why I want to read these articles. Let's see what they got to say. Animals rights activists argue that because animals are sentient, the only reason humans are different, treated differently is because of speciesism, which is an arbitrary distinction based on the incorrect belief that humans are the only species deserving of moral consideration. Okay, I agreed with absolutely everything there up until this. I think I am speciesist, but the distinction's not arbitrary because I believe that humans are the only species capable of reason. I don't think that means that we're the only one deserving of moral consideration. <laughs> Speciesism, like racism and sexism, is wrong because of animals popular in the meat industry like cows, pigs, and chickens suffer when confined, tortured, and slaughtered when there is no reason to morally distinguish between humans and non-human animals. Look, even if you're buying from like the cleanest, most green brands, that does still happen, whether you're contributing to it or not. It does still happen, and that is a fact. The reason that people have rights is to prevent unjust suffering. That's what they worked out after World War II. After the Americans marched into Germany and they found out what the Nazis had been doing, hidden to them all of this time, there was literally an exception made for war crimes committed by American soldiers because the excuse was basically that, you know what, they were in shock upon discovering the concentration camps. Fair enough. You know what, fair enough, lads, because holy shit. There's, you know, it's one thing to commit war crimes, it's another to systematically eradicate people, like an entire race of people. I mean, I can't imagine being on the front line in World War II, right at the end of the war, going to Germany and finding that stuff. My God. I've, I watched some videos about everything. It's very interesting. I'm a historian, guys. I love it. But yeah. Lucy, I see a lot of messages. I'll read that in a minute. I know Lucy's going to have some great takes. She's going to have some really intelligent stuff to say. So, similarly. The reason that animal rights activists want animals to have rights is to prevent them from suffering unjustly. We have animal cruelty statutes to prevent some animal suffering, although US law prohibits only the most egregious, extraordinary animal cruelty. These laws do nothing to prevent the most forms of animal exploitation, including fur, veil, and foie grass. I don't even know what these are, or if I'm pronouncing them correctly. Okay, again, it's very US based, but yeah. They've got other articles that I guess you could read about these. Again, I'm really sorry. I should link these in chat and the description. I'm going to do that now. If you guys want to read this for yourself, boom, there's the article in the description. Boom, Shanker. I'm going to add these as I go. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what um, veal is. <clears throat> what is veal? Veal? It's a byproduct of the dairy industry? What is this? Is the meat of calves. Oh, okay. All right, so animal flesh. What's foie gras? Fatty liver? Okay, so it's basically like, you know, animal, animal meat. So again, like the US, for example, has pretty bog standard stuff for this. There's preventions for egregious and extraordinary animal cruelty, but most ordinary forms of exploitation, you know, like, you know, killing them for the meat industry. No laws against that. Is that right or wrong? You know, human rights versus animal rights. So no one is asking for animals to have the same rights as humans, but in an animal right activist's ideal world, animals would have the right to live free of human use and exploitation. A vegan world where animals are no longer used for food, clothing, or entertainment. So no leather, no fur skin, you know, no circus elephants, no, you know, it doesn't, the thing that differentiates this from the extremists that Jim Boy was talking about is, um, it doesn't mention no pets, no, you know, Dogs for blind people, no, you know, um, conservation programs. I don't know, again, I don't know what the, like, average animal rights activist is. I don't know how extreme it really is. Am I an animal rights activist? I don't know, I really, honestly, I don't. But I think I'm going to find out today. Now, while there is some debate as to what basic human rights are, which there shouldn't be, because we literally created a... I was going to say, United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1946, Geneva, you know, Geneva Convention, guys. We literally 
agreed, the entire world agreed to a universal declaration. I've literally got it written down in one of my history books on the shelf there. It's got, it's, I've got a book, it's like uh, famous historical speeches, and one of them is literally the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as it was laid out, you know, in the with the UN post-World War II. But, uh, yeah, most people recognize that other humans are certain fundamental rights, you know, don't kill them, that's, you know, killing their freedom, you know, right of freedom to speech, freedom of religion, you know, freedom of, you know, the, you know, freedom for adults to vote, you know, um, you know, freedom of, you know, yeah, security, standard of living, Enjoy in other countries' asylum from persecution, that kind of thing. So, we're talking specifically here about the right to life, liberty, security, and adequate standard of living, you know, food, water, shelter, to seek and enjoy in other countries' asylum from persecution, you know, so if you're Syrian or Iraqi and you're, you know, Iranian even, running away from, you know, a dictatorship or a civil war or terrorism, um, the human rights says you should be able to seek asylum in other countries. And may I just say, the UK has done a piss poor job of that more recently. My God! But it's really interesting to see the arguments against it because I can I can kind of understand some of them. Um, I think we should really be practicing more selflessness. At least Germany's kind of got it right. They're doing their best. I've actually heard of pretty good things about Angela Merkel, despite being a conservative. I think she's an incredible leader, actually. Um, just juggling everything, you know. <laughs> Obviously, to own property, which is something that animals don't have, specifically, animals don't own property. Freedom of opinion and expression, obviously. To education, of thought, conscience, and religion. The right to freedom from torture and degrading treatment, among others, okay? So, obviously, some of these, you know, you can imagine, okay, so, like, animals don't own property. That's probably irrelevant, but freedom from torture and degrading treatment, I'd say that's pretty relevant. You know, standard of living... I guess animals aren't going to have opinion and expression. They aren't capable of, well, they are capable of thought and conscience in a limited degree, but not to the point of religion. Uh, they haven't they haven't progressed that far. <laughs> but, you know, you do wonder. So, these rights are different from animal rights because we have the power to ensure that other humans have access to food and housing, are free of torture, and can express themselves. We're all equal in that regard. We're all capable of the same amount of reasoning, you know, give or take. On the other hand, it's not in our power to ensure that every bird has a nest or that every skull is an acorn. If it's not in our power, is it in our responsibility? I'm not kidding, guys. When I say that Spider-Man is the best superhero ever written, I know it's cliche, but I think it's got a lot of relevance right now, hasn't it? With great power comes great responsibility. And this is why I don't want anyone to ever feel bad about not being able to change the world. You are one person out of billions. It is not your responsibility, nor do you have the power. If you do have the power, it is your responsibility. Which is why wealthier individuals and wealthier countries and wealthier corporations and wealthier charities need to be doing the legwork for this kind of thing. Alright? And as one individual of, like, the, you know, vast mass of, you know, um, community and grassroots help, I'll do my part. But, like, you know, uh, responsibility falls on those with power. Part of animals' rights is leaving the animals alone to live their lives without encroaching on their world or other lives. Exactly. So, you know, is the right thing to leave them be, to let nature take its course, or to intervene and protect them at the cost of their freedom? And, you know, you could say the same thing about, you know, imperialism. I think that's a much clearer, cut and clear debate given, you know, it's humans on humans. But humans to animals. Animals are fundamentally different from humans. You know, they're not equal to us. They are, however, sentient, capable, and, you know, reasoning, thinking, living beings. You know? And some of them, at least, you know. So, what do you guys think of this? This is a much more balanced view. That was very much an informative and educational thing. What do you guys think of this? What do you have to say? Um, have you got any opinions on this? Any hot takes? I'd be really curious to hear them. So, um... My brain is engaging what you are saying, Matt. Then show it to me, Trom. Yeah, animal bonds do exist, and I feel like there's something interesting to talk about. Okay, DJ, but do you think, you know... Ah, uh, I don't know. Just trying to put words in sentences, yeah. DJ's raising his hand. Guys, I'm not a teacher, come on. <laughs> I'm trying to stay on top of listen, Matt. God damn, I don't want to pick a random number, okay? Stop talking about FNAF. Whatever it is. Anyway, we'll talk about Peta. I honestly am not that informed on Peta, but I've not heard good things about him. I want to go into this with an open mind. You know, I'll make my own judgment when I feel informed. But you are welcome to share your opinion as radical as you like in chat. That is awesome. You love, well, you don't always love to see the extremely, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Peta kidnapping dogs from front yards, yikes. Um, here's the thing. I think the thing is, obviously, animals don't communicate through words, but they can communicate through what they do, such as pet culling their owner. Oh, 
exactly. This is what I was saying earlier. Lucy, I was talking about you on the streaming and Go back and watch, like, the first hour of the stream if you want. I did talk about you and uh, your plan to have two cats when we're living in a house together. Um, because you like the furry babies and you have a fear of pregnancy and, you know, real children. You don't want to deal with that. Um, but, yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Animals have some basic forms of communication from animal to animal, but also specifically animal to human. Cats have literally been around long enough in human culture to have evolved to a way to manipulate humans. It's hilarious. Animals, like cats specifically, because they're <clears throat> some of the really intelligent ones, have specifically evolved to imitate human baby mewling noises to try and uh, make us feel more affectionate for them. <clears throat> but also, you know, cats are just awesome for a number of reasons. <coughs> Cats, um, you know, can be very aloof and selfish, but so can humans. And, like, um, you know, if a cat will give you what you want from it, if you give what they want from it, you know, same with dogs or whatever, you know, like, animals have some really interesting kind of nuances with the communication that are kind of alike to human babies. They have some very basic, you know, senses of, you know, um, I guess, like, language. It's not even close to language, but, you know. But anyway... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My gosh. Oh, boy. But yeah, Lucy's going to be watching The Hulk because your mum wants to watch all the MC movies in chronological order because she keeps feeling like she doesn't understand any of the references. I actually recently watched Shang-Chi. I finally caught up on that. Great movie. And um, yeah, The Hulk actually is referenced in that movie, kind of. There is a reference, apparently. It's very subtle, though. Um, so definitely uh, enjoy that when it comes around. But more importantly, enjoy the movie because Shang-Chi is a great standalone movie. It feels like a new Spider-Man, you know? I don't think we're superior, we just function on a different level than Mal. Same thing? What sets us apart from other creatures that we're able to communicate and pass knowledge that far exceeds individuals? Yes, actually, that's a good point. Some animals don't have the concept of an individual. This collection and stacked amount of knowledge uh, we have been able to preserve, pass on and make available to others of our kind worldwide. It's just pretty interesting to talk about. Yeah, skill emoji. I agree with the prevent unnecessary suffering thing. There's some stuff we unfortunately as a species cannot stop using at once. If anything, it's going to have to be a slow process decreasing over time, finding alternatives, reform and not revolution. I agree. I believe if humanity as a whole is going to become completely vegan, I wouldn't be surprised, right? If veganism grew in popularity slowly but surely over time, because there's no way it could be like overturned. Like, that in a thousand years, if humanity still existed, that it was 100% vegan. That's a really interesting concept to me. That's a great sci-fi novel. Someone should write it. Like, distant future where the entire world is vegan and be eating meat is a crime. So there's, like, a black market for it. That'd be interesting. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah. Personally, I don't think we actually have to meet a point where we don't use animal products ever. We are evolved omnivores, after all. At least for me, personally, it's a lot more about where you source it from than it is about using it to begin with. Really good article. Asking just the right question, to be honest. So, Lucy... Would you be ever become vegetarian or vegan? Open this up to everybody. Guys, is, are there any vegetarians or vegans here? Would you consider becoming vegetarian or vegan? For me personally, there's only one problem, and that's nutrition. I will happily give up meats. My dad was just telling me he ate a vegan burger from McDonald's that was indistinguishable in terms of taste and texture from the real deal, like with the meat, right? And I was like, all right, I'll get that next time. That sounds nice. But the thing is... Does it actually provide the nutrition you need? I think this is still a bit contested. But, like, if we were to have vegan or vegetarian diets, we would be lacking, you know, carbohydrates, proteins, even vitamins and minerals to an extent, you know, in our diet. And that could be an issue. That's, like, that's just a self-destructive issue. We've got to have a balanced diet. And, you know, I think fishing is pretty important to talk about here as well, because that's, like, a whole separate issue, because fish are a bit different to, like, land meat. <laughs> but, um... I could do a debate direct on fishing alone, honestly, because there's just so much to talk about there. Fishing sustainably is really important, you know, for the continued, you know, existence of fish, you know, as our food. Because if we're not sustainable about our food sources, we're harming ourselves, we're shooting ourselves in the food as well as other animals. We are a part of the food web, the food chain, and we need to recognize that. Um, but I would say that, you know, that, I, again, it's sad, because end of the day, if you're not vegetarian, if you're not vegan, you are killing animals. You are complicit in the murder of animals for your own food and that's not nice but it's really hard for me to say that i would give up meat because nutrition and you know i hate to be that guy because this goes against a lot of my other like beliefs in terms of tendencies but like i actually think you know 
it's a state of nature that we consume the meat of other living beings. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, because if we didn't, we would die. You know, like... I think there's a way of doing it humanely. And, you know, there's a difference between, you know, an animal that is like a pet, an individual part of like a family, and just another one of the farm collective. But like... That's putting one life over the other, and even though it's, it's like, animal to humans easy, humans are more important than animals, you can use that, but animal to animal, it still feels kind of weird, you know, it feels dicey. So I really wouldn't mind becoming a vegetarian if it were possible to maintain the right levels of nutrition. I just don't see how that's feasible, sadly. I just don't, I think, like, that's just not possible. Um, you know, this is really interesting, because it actually takes me back to Minecraft story mode of all things. Thinking about the fact that Jesse has a pet pig, and it's like, pigs are normally regarded as, like, food animals, not pet animals. You don't buy a pet pig. You don't have a household pig. Pigs are like just, you know, meat for the farms that we process like, you know, an inanimate object. Uh, and it's actually brought up in story mode in the first episode. Uh, Reuben, Jesse's pig, almost gets, you know, slaughtered, um, you know, for food. Um, and Jesse has to either, you know, sell his sword or threaten the guy with a sword um, to get Jesse back. It's one of those really interesting interactions that could have gone in more depth, sadly, but was, was really interesting. Man, I love Minecraft Story Mode. Don't get me started on that. I'm going to be here for ages. But yeah. But yeah. Fair enough, Luba, Nuba. Tell you what, if you're not an expert and you don't really have anything to say, just sit down and listen because you will learn something. I've definitely been learning something. Lucy says that Pet has been doing some shit that is honestly doing far more harm for animal welfare than good. Their idea of animal welfare is complete independence from humans, from what I understand. <laughs> That's just not viable, not how they go about it. Humans have had too much influence on animals for decades, you mean millennia, for that to be possible. Uh, and I would say that goes the other way. Humans, like it or not, are still a part of the natural world. We can't just separate ourselves into a world completely disconnected from the rest of the food chain. It's not possible. Just because we're at the top of the food chain and there aren't any animals that regularly and consistently and naturally eat humans doesn't mean that we can distance ourselves from it. You know, the vast majority of our food relies on animals. One third in all bites of food in the world is pollinated by bees. That alone means that, like, you know, veganism is not really, like, possible, you know? Or is that? No, veganism is possible, but vegetarianism is needed. Um, like, we have to eat, you know, the stuff that's been pollinated by bees. Because, again, it depends on association. You talk to environmental uh, you know, extremists, like uh, animal rights extremists, and maybe they'd say, you know, they take that literally, which is a bit strange. Did you mean bee stars, LMFO? Because that's actually a topic in the show such manga. I would go vegetarian, but not vegan, except for leather. I would never use real leather, and it can be avoided. Yeah, I think things like skinning animals for clothing is just unnecessary, and, like, you know, like, I just think that's depraved. Like, I think you can, that is completely avoidable. There are alternatives that are just as fine. It's just unnecessary. It's just evil. Like, it's just disgusting. Like, there's no need. Like, if you're gonna kill animals, at least do something efficient with them. Use them for food, you know? Keep people alive. Don't skin them for the sake of clothing, please. Like, it's purely fashion clothing. It's, like, so unnecessary. I I'm, I'm against that, honestly. I think that's gross. And my parents gladly, you know, have brought me up to be, like, you know, an animal welfare, you know, uh, I guess activist rather than an animal rights activist. I'm not sure about um, animal rights. That really depends. But yeah, uh, we overfish like crazy, not to mention intensive pollution. Again, pollution ties into this. We just, pollution's a separate issue. We just need to not do that. And yeah, fishing needs to be done sustainably. Fish farming is a thing that's, you know, getting a bit of traction, but it needs more attention. We've got to stop overfishing, especially in the UK. We're actually, like, killing populations. And we're going to literally destroy our own supply by overfishing. It's so stupid. Like, even if you're completely selfish and you don't care about animals as living beings, overfishing's still bad. There's still loads of arguments to be made there. Right? So much has to be changed for the conditions to be right. Absolutely. Screwdriver, I'm gonna work for screw keyboard. Damn. But yeah, personally, I wouldn't mind going vegetarian. I'd also generally prefer just reducing my use of meat in meals to be a special occasions thing. That is exactly what my family has done. So, again, one thing that I'm gonna be forever grateful to my parents for, they say, I'm really sorry we didn't bring you up right, and like, you know, we didn't educate you on woke topics, and you know, you know, you weren't very wealthy, and I will fight to the death. I will kill people to prove them wrong, because I was brought up 
not only with a pretty decent education for all of its flaws, you know, I'm pretty illiterate, but also actually, like, I was brought with really good, fe- you know, food, my meals, the things my mum, like, has made and cooked and, like, bought, um, you know, for the last, like, my whole life, last 20 years. 30 years, include all my siblings. Like, she's done a really good job of giving us a nutritious, sustainable, and healthy diet. Like, my parents are very specific about how they shop, and I've learned a bit from them about shopping very carefully and going for the right brands with the correct labels and stuff. Um, and what we have actually been doing um, for years now is having mostly meals that are kind of meat-free, that are either vegetarian, only have fish, or at the best, like, have chicken. Chicken is one of those things that is, like, more... Um, there are a lot, like, it's easy to populate chickens. There's there's a lot more chickens around than, like, cows and pigs, right? So, you can still get away with eating more of that sustainably. But, like, chickens included, we never have steak. I've had steak, like, three times in my life, you know, in this household. I've had it a couple more times, you know, going places. But, yeah. Um, and then again, if you can't McDonald's burgers, actually. Because that's steak, isn't it? Yeah, no, forget what I said. No, that doesn't count. That, that's happened a lot more recently, I will say. But, like, you know, I've had a lot of um, spaghetti bolognese, which does have meat in it, but, you know. Yeah, things like sausages, pork. I'm trying to think of all the obvious meats. I never have, like, lamb or goat or anything fancy like that. I've also never had horse meat, funnily enough. Uh, but, yeah, um, I've never, like, we... we, we keep it down like we still eat meat but we do it less honestly if every household just reduced the amount of meat they ate to three times a week which is still almost half or less like once a week then like that would actually solve the problem we would easily be able to keep farming as we do but way more sustainably but the problem is is that there's you know smaller groups who are eating meat like every day um <clears throat> and it just i don't know it needs it needs to be toned down if everyone toned it down you know, we could actually enjoy quite a lot of meat. I could probably actually increase the amount of meat in my diet if we as a global collective reduced how much we ate, which is crazy. <clears throat> and the same with like fish and stuff. But yeah, um, I would go vegan, but unfortunately something has to be this way. If we don't eat meat, we'll lose important things with you on this one, man. I'm glad you agree. I respect veganism, but I personally wouldn't do it. I just think that's going to the point of putting my health at risk and... I don't think it's selfish to put my individual as a human being health before the lives of animals and livestock. I don't think that's immoral. I know it's a moral dilemma, but I, I, I mean, you don't have to kill animals to go to stop being vegan. Actually, being vegetarian is fine. I think vegetarians are sodden, solid middle ground. But yeah, going back to story mode. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to sound kind of petty, but I personally find veganism kind of bullshit. There's completely morally correct ways of keeping animals for dairy and eggs. I agree. Like, literally, what do vegans eat? Like, literally, plant, and that's it. Like, vegetarian is not eating animals, which is fair enough. You can kind of do that sustainably. There are substitutes. I think the market for that is growing. But um, veganism, you can't eat anything produced by an animal. So you're literally limited to, like, leaves and grass. You want to eat fucking leaves for the rest of your life? Please. Um, it, is, it is bullshit, yeah. Beekeeping is also super beneficial for bees and suggesting like that slavery is idiotic. Exactly, because bees already do that naturally. All that we're doing is providing a more, you know, organized and like specific infrastructure to actually make that way more efficient, which will benefit both bees and humans. It will benefit everyone involved. There's actually no downside to beekeeping. It's not like with, you know, chicken farms, pig farms, cow farms, where actually we're killing the animals, you know, for food, but I think you can do that sustainably, you know, I think you can do that in a humane way, which is, you know, yep, we're still murdering animals, but that's nature, I think that is how, that is needed for, you know, the life cycle, everything dies, all right, you know, and we're just lucky to be at the top of the food chain, all right, we're just lucky, so just take the benefit and go on, all right, that's what I'd say, but I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but yeah, right, if the bees don't want to live in the hive you set up for them, they will straight up just leave, exactly, if an animal is not happy where it lives, it will try and leave. That's why abused animals end up on the streets. They will literally just leave. They don't have thought capable of being advanced as humans and developing, like, Stockholm Syndrome or some shit. I mean, maybe, but I, I kind of doubt it. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong with the science, but, like, that's that's not... That don't fly. Also, did we reach the end of the playlist? No, we didn't. The music's just really quiet. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. It's, it's, it's quiet, but it's there. Um... <laughs> Another hot take. We've bred cows so much for max yield that they can get immense health issues when not milked regularly. Same with sheep sharing. Exactly. 
so many hundreds of generations of like animals being kept on farms in this way has actually made them evolve to fit the human economy that we've created which is crazy but it's true like i hadn't even thought of that lucy that's pretty big brain so like we need to either ease them out of it slowly for like over hundreds of years or just keep at it you know um because yeah it's again you can't have these sudden changes revolution doesn't work anymore we live in the age of nuclear weapons and the internet okay we have to reform things gradually uh and yeah you know, i am all for activism of all kinds all right but like you can't just overturn things overnight it has to be a slow gradual process where we compromise and compromise and compromise okay exactly yeah again it's just a waste isn't it the, is the chicken's not going to cry about it if you eat their eggs the you know no animal is going to be upset over you eating the, uh, them the animal or like the animal will be upset over them getting killed and like torturous conditions which is just unnecessary but like I don't think an animal is going to be upset over their own death, their own meat being eaten, the death of another animal, the death of them being eaten, or their produced, like, eggs or milk, whatever, being used for eating, because, uh, like, I mean, in a few instances, yes, maybe if there's, like, a family getting I don't know, but, like, yeah. Like, do you think a cow gets upset when you milk them? Nature literally put the udders there so that we could drink them. i got to say, can you imagine how people discovered milking cows? One guy just went up to the cow and was like... What are these? These four big <laughs> penis looking. <laughs> I will call them udders. I will give them a good old suckle. Like my mother's breasts. You can, I can imagine that start off really weird, but like, you know, it, it's there. Use it. Like, I mean, if I mean, <laughs> if we're all living in a simulation, then I mean, uh, my argument is just sod. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Um... So Lucy's really an animal welfare, but not an animal rights kind of activist here. I think I'm on board with that, you know. There's a moderate balance you can achieve with this kind of thing, rather than going too extreme either way. Um, yeah, they won't care about you consuming their byproducts, and they probably won't care about their fellows being killed for food. Probably, sometimes. Um, but yeah, dead cat, man, that sucks. <laughs> they tell the other game, like, bro, the titty juice from the cow tastes good. Oh no, <laughs> that's a cursed comment. I'm pinning that. I'm pinning that. That wins. You've won the comment section today. That might get unpinned. That might be unpinned in the stream. I don't know, but that is the funniest thing I've read. But yeah, um, yeah, fair enough, Lucy. That's the thing. I'm not really sure. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll comprehend that they're being eaten. I think they'll just be upset that they're being killed. But yeah, no, like vegan vegans are silly. Let's read the next article, okay? We've got a few more articles to get through. We're almost halfway through. I've already been streaming for an hour and a half, so this stream has ended up being way longer than I thought it would. I have no idea where the time went, but I guess we're in for the long one, which is fine by me, because now we're getting some great discussion. So, if you're enjoying the stream, leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share this to your friends, check out the links in the description below. Today's charity shout-out goes to St. Jude's. I'll talk about them more later. Um, and yeah, uh, these are also going to get linked in the description and uh, live chat, excuse me. Um, you know, um, my social medias are also there, that kind of thing. So anyway, 11 pros and cons of animal rights. Let's check this out. This one's just a list of pros and cons now. According to the laws of most nations, animals are covered under property rights. That means the value of their life is dependent upon market forces and demand. If something happens to a pet, unless there is cruelty in the actions taken, the responsibility involves replacing the property of that pet instead of addressing the fundamental right of life. So, animals are kind of treated as property. Bit of a slippery slope. For that reason, some nations and jurisdictions have begun to protect the rights of animals as living beings instead of property. Switzerland, Germany, and the United Kingdom have overhauled many of their laws to provide better protections for animals so that their welfare can be guaranteed. I guess I'm actually in a progressive country. The, the primary benefit of giving animals rights is to protect the general welfare of society. Not only are animals living creatures, but people who take out their fury on an animal are just a few steps away from doing so to humans. By identifying people who take these actions early, the rest of society can be protected while the individual in question can be entered into a rehabilitation program. This is like the most wholesome way to deal with murderers. Like, I'm not even joking. If someone kills an animal or like does something awful to an animal, that like, what's the something from doing to a human? You know, that's like really close. That's... I think it's worthy of a crime, especially if it's a love down like a pet or something. Like, I've heard, you know, horror stories about, like, mass murderers who killed, like, cats and shit. I don't know. It's just awful. Disgusting. 
Got a dip. Alright, I'll see you, Lucy. I love you. See ya. She's so nice. <laughs> yeah, um... Veg vegetarianism is based. Veganism is fighting the wrong kind of fight. Agreed. I think that's a pretty base take. I want to pin that now. <laughs> the disadvantage with animal rights is that it equates animal life with human life. With much of our diet coming from animal muscle protein, such a legal structure would change the entire agricultural community and potentially create many more food deserts throughout the world. Exactly. Food security would be fucked if the world became vegetarian. Here are some additional facts to consider when looking at the pros and cons of animal rights. What are the pros of animal rights? So, the death of an animal doesn't really benefit a human. Humans may eat animals, but animal protein isn't necessary for human survival. Okay, vegetarians and vegans prove this every day. Okay, but are they healthy? I'm going to need to do more research on this. Maybe uh, animal, if animal protein isn't necessary for survival, maybe I could become vegetarian. If we kill animals, then we create a gap in nature's evolutionary process that can affect the rest of the world. Sustainable food approaches, when combined with a greater respect for human life, could create a healthier society. Number two, saving animal lives would save our water supply. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a stuffy nose all morning. God. So, you know I'm all about that water supply. Animals have a large water footprint. It is one of the most resource intensive items in our current food supply. To produce just one pound of beef requires almost 1,800 gallons of water. One pound of pork requires nearly 600 gallons of water. In comparison, providing the equivalent number of soybeans or corn would cost 216 gallons and 108 gallons respectively. So, if we switch to being vegetarian, we're saving more water. And fellas, you know I'm all about that hydration, alright? I want everyone to stay hydrated. Get your water, alright? Because that's actually, you know, saving the world, saving resources. Very good, very good. Animal testing is not a guarantee of safety. The number of medications that are safe for animals to take but unsafe for humans could fill the list length of could fill a list the length of your arm. There's also a handful of medications that are safe for humans to take but quite harmful to animals. Although there is a similarity between humans and certain animals, there are enough differences to make the data gathered become unreliable. So testing on animals isn't a guarantee of safety, but testing on humans could be worse. Preventing animal rights is a costly venture. Many of the animal testing procedures that are initiated never result in a product and the figures continue to rise. In the 1990s, up to 92% of products that were tested on animals never made it to the market. Oh my gosh, I'm yawning. Ooh. By the 2010s, the figure rose to over 98%. These tests all came at a cost and that money needs to come from somewhere. So again, animal testing is expensive, I guess. I feel like we could really do take action to reduce products and testing. This is something I'm not sure of. This is one of those aspects I'm a little I'm not sure of them. Animals have a certain intelligence to them. Chimpanzees have the same ability as humans to manipulate their environment, use tools, and finish specific tasks. That's true, they can actually use tools, which is pretty crazy. Um, an adult pig has a comparative intelligence to a three-year-old human child. That's exactly what I was saying earlier. You know, adult animals are comparable to, like, you know, human infants in terms of intelligence. Um, dolphins have a complex language and can recognize themselves in the mirror, which provides self-awareness. Elephants have complex social groups to display empathy and grief and have an outstanding memory. If we saw many of these traits in humans, we'd expect that person to have rights. Why should an animal be any different? And again, this is the thing. I feel like you'd have to give specific rights to specific species using certain criteria. Um, you know, all of this is true, but still none of them really have the, you know, social, you know, psychological capabilities of humans. I'm really, I'm 50-50 on this kind of thing. Uh, I think we can, you know, eat meat sustainably. Um, I don't think we can go 100% like vegetarian, but I might become vegetarian at some point, honestly. I feel like that would, might be just, I mean, the th here's the thing, guys. If I refuse meat, it's not really going to actually affect meat being produced. There's this idea that if there's no demand, supply will diminish. I don't think that's actually true. I guess it could be, but it only works on a mass scale. So basically, if I'm going to become vegetarian, it's only going to actually make a difference if everyone else becomes vegetarian. Otherwise, I'm just losing out. I think it's one of those cases where maybe I should stop buying meat, but that doesn't mean I'll turn down meat if I'm offered. Because if someone's already prepared a meat dish, meat dish and they're offering it to me for dinner, like... If I say no, um, that's just me, you know, having a stick up my ass, being like, you know, a bit, a bit of a killjoy, you know, that's just, that's just being annoying. But like, if I go out of my way, in my own control to avoid buying meats, then that is going to have an impact. 
Whereas, if someone's offering me meat that's already been bought, paid for, and, you know, like, served, I may as well eat it, otherwise it's a waste, right? So, basically, don't ask, but maybe don't turn down offers. I don't think I'm ever going to be vegetarian, but I think I might try and actually actively avoid buying something with meat in it specifically. But again, if meat's already been bought, family's having meat for dinner, you know, I may as well just eat it with them. Otherwise, it's a waste. You know, what's the point? I don't want to be that, you know, awkward 14-year-old girl who's like, uh, no, actually, I don't eat meat uh, because it's against my ideology. Bitch, finish your education before you come to conclusions like that, all right? Oh, man. Sorry, I've met people like that in real life. They piss me off. A lot of funds could be used elsewhere. Money that is being spent on animal testing right now could be dedicated to food programs that feed the hungry. Most food programs around the world can average twenty dollars, uh, sorry, twenty cents per meal provided. In the U.S., about sixteen billion is spent every year on animal testing. If just half those funds were sent to food programs, that would create forty billion extra meals to feed the hungry. Once again, another problem with the modern world, including the U.S. I mean, modern world, but like. There, we literally, the US, the UK, whatever, we have the money to sort out things like poverty and pollution and homelessness and starvation. And it's like, instead, we have to rely on charities because the government keeps funneling money into weapons instead. For fuck's sake, just at least about like a third of that. And that will, like, oh, it's just all wrong, man. All the money's going to the wrong places. <clears throat> so these are the pros of animal rights. And they're definitely convincing, but. Let's hear the counter argument. What are the cons of animal rights? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, Nubel, I'll see you around, buddy. Aaron from Game Grumps, about having around about how bad the almond industry is. I don't know about that. Fake meat is the same values as normal meat, usually. I don't know enough about that. I should really investigate this. Cherry Viola Switch Gang. Interesting. Um, what are the cons of animal rights? It would change medication testing processes. Many of the research products which involve new medications to test the products on animals before testing them on humans. The goal of doing so is to protect human lives by seeing how a medication would react. Some animals, such as rats and chimpanzees, have a DNA profile that is very similar to humans. The data gathered can help researchers understand more about the medication they're working on to benefit human societies. You literally said, you literally fucking said that um, there are enough differences to make the data gathered unreliable with animal testing. And yet here you've said they're very similar, so the data gathered is helpful. Which is it? Is the data reliable or not? Which is it? Pick one. Is it Anna, like, wh which one? Is the data not reliable enough or is it? Pick one. I would say the data is reliable enough. Like, you can empirically prove that the science, that's not like an opinion thing. Just, is it, is it reliable? God. We need to test new items on something. It is unethical to try experiment products in humans, is exactly what I was saying. Some argue that it is immoral, even with informed consent. Research that causes harm to a person may not be classified as being beneficial to society. By using animals as a last line of defense to measure the effectiveness of various products, the harm that an untested and dangerous item could cause to humans is naturally limited. Look, I think that's fair game. It's got to be tested on someone. Something or someone has got to take the hit. Why not the animals, you know? If it's a human, it's going to be a lot more complicated. Test on the animals. Come on. You can still do that without, you know, doing something super unethical. Not having animal rights reduces human risks. Although there are honest questions about the effectiveness of animal testing, it boils down to an us versus them debate. Having an animal die because there are unforeseen consequences of a drug or product means a human being doesn't need to die. In the chain of life, a human life is superior to an animal life, which some argue makes a sacrifice worthwhile. I agree with this. This is a necessary evil, I would say. Kind of like taxes, alright? This will benefit in the long run. It's either this or a human being dies, and I would honestly rather the human being not die, because that just that's gonna open up a can of worms, which is just gonna be more paperwork, you know. It's I know it's it's not a particularly nice thing, but yeah, I, I would say a human life is more valuable than an animal life in, in pretty much all cases. Unless you need food, I guess, because cannibalism is kinda yikes. I have no idea how nutritious human meat is. Probably not that good. <laughs> there would be added enforcement costs. By offering animals rights that are equivalent to rights of humans, an extra lawyer of law enforcement would need to be added to our criminal justice systems. People would be spending more time in prison because of the charges related to new rights afforded to animals. Added officers and officials would be needed for enforcement. Since existing laws often afford many rights to animals already in terms of proper treatment, spending this extra cost to provide equivalents may not be the right choice to make. So, 
basically, it's just unnecessary. We could use this to, you know, sort out problems that humans are having and, you know, save humans, but, it's, you know, animals, you know, they're not in, 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 entitled or expecting any rights, whereas we humans are. And number five, animals would require a human representative. Our current legal system recognizes the advancements of humanity. To represent animal rights, a human being would be forced to represent an animal who may have their rights violated. Although some cases show clear-cut evidence of abuse and neglect, there would be an added level of interpretation to some cases that can make animal rights be more about getting even with others than rather being a case of a true case of seeking justice. All of the um, cons really convinced me. The pro arguments were decent, but the cons have convinced me. I think they're much more convincing. I mean, you know. The death of an animal can benefit a human if it's being, you know, used efficiently. But yeah, the cost, the legal stuff, the testing stuff. The pros and cons of animal rights should cause us to question our belief structures. How we treat animals is a reflection of how we treat others. Giving animals more protections under laws that govern property may make sense, but giving animals an equivalency may not. There is no easy answer or compromise to this debate. So a very neutral point of view. I don't want to spend too long on this because I think like the previous one, the 11 pros and cons was very neutral, very informative, and has pretty much done the right thing in summing up the debate. But yeah, I would say it's not an easy question. I think situation to situation, I may have different approaches. That doesn't make me a hypocrite, but like, you know, there's ways of dealing with specific situations. Um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I need to stretch my back. <laughs> but yeah, the um, I would say animals should be, you know, people who abuse, neglect, and do horrible things to animals should be punished the same way they would if they did them to humans. I think we should recognize that animals are sentient, conscious, thinking, and feeling, not on the level of humans, maybe with human infants, but, you know, uh, shouldn't be, you know, abused or neglected. But I, I don't think they deserve equivalence to humans. I don't think an animal is going to have, you know, even, like, animals don't care about property. Like, animals don't have the mental faculties for, you know, le signing legal contracts and stuff. There's no way we could expect them to do that. And with power comes responsibility. Animals have less power, there's less responsibility involved for them. Like, I think, you know, there's a difference between grinding up live animals for food inhumanely, going out of your way to torture and neglect animals in cages, and, you know, giving animals as close to a natural environment as possible while slaughtering them for the meat industry. I think that can, it's not a very nice thing. It is murder, but it's not, you know, something that should be illegal. I think it's silly. You know, animals obviously suffer. They will suffer when they kill. Humans suffer every day, okay? We go through far more complex mental and psychological trauma than animals possibly can. And, you know, people have to go through tough things, you know, all the time. Um... You know, <laughs> I think with animals, like, you know, they're not really even going to care if you're using their product. Like, chickens aren't going to care if you use their eggs. I don't think animals are going to care if other animals are getting killed very often. I think there's a difference between murdering, like, a household cat and, like, you know, uh, a slaughterhouse, which is benefiting the economy and society and, you know, using animals to the most efficient way in the most humane way possible. Because it's either that or we all go vegetarian, which is just not sustainable. We, like... Even if we can survive without animal meats from, like, the muscle proteins and shit, the economy is gonna suffer. It is gonna create mass unemployment, you know? That's gonna be a whole issue. There could be inflation. I don't even know. I think it's much, you know, better that we gradually really for sustainable farming. Same with fish, you know? We are killing them, but it's the circle of life, you know? All kinds of crimes still happen in nature. Animals kill and rape other animals we don't do anything about it like that's just animals being animals like you know that's not a crime uh that's just you know what it is like we don't care because again hu humans are different you know and I, I think you can balance the two i think animal welfare rather than animal rights is the way because you know you should never be putting animals above humans in a situation i would say and i think these pros and cons and these articles those last two sum it up perfectly that first guy where it was looking at an extreme uh, but I think those those two articles really uh, are interesting. And I think um, the important thing, the practical thing, I'll see you around Dead Cat, is that we all, as individuals and as a collective, try and just be more sustainable. You know, make better shopping choices, you know, eat less meat, you know. Just because we eat less meat doesn't mean we have to have the meat eat it at all. But, you know, you know, buy products from labels of, like, you know, organically produced eggs and, you know, Sources that have you know been less cruel to animals. Otherwise, you're implicit in the animal cruelty. Uh, we are we're all guilty of this, you know. And um, 
you know, like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe go online, find a charity campaign, donate for, you know, uh, preventing, you know, animal cruelty, not just in obvious ways, but also, you know, you know limiting animal, like, testing, maybe. I think I'd rather animals tested over humans, but still, we don't need to skin them for leather and, like, you know, fur. That's inhumane. It's just unnecessary. You know, it doesn't impress me when I see, like, you know, um, what are they called? Taxidermies. It doesn't impress me when I see taxidermies in halls. It really creeps me out. Um, yeah, I think there's a balance. Like, I think as humans, we both give the rights that animals can enjoy and take them away and, you know, exploit the animals for our own personal gain. I think that's fair. Because, you know, both parties are gaining and losing, you know? The animals are both gaining and losing in that agreement, and, like... You know, there's a way, there's a way of doing it humanely and sustainably. I think that's my take. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of trying to find the middle ground here, but I, I definitely think it's, it's a very specific thing which will differ from situation to situation. I think the important thing is that we recognize that animals are living beings, and that we should reduce their suffering as much as possible. Uh, but also that, you know... There's nothing wrong with eating meat, guys. There's nothing wrong with it. You shouldn't feel bad about it at all. It is completely natural and necessary for our survival. Uh, you know, for the economy, everything. But yeah. We're halfway through. There's a couple more pages, but what I want to look at before I go on a break and AFK is the PETA UK page. I've heard a lot about these, but I'm going to pretend I don't know anything about PETA. I'm going to go in blind with an open mind, okay? What is this PETA thing? I don't know. Let's just see what they have to say. Let's hear them out with the weird... What are these costumes? Bro, I can see your boobies. <laughs> Bro. Is Livy the only person left here? Everyone's leaving. Oh, well. No one's going to want to read this. All right, let's just see what PETA has to say. The prevention of cruelty to animals, something, I don't remember, it was a charity, I think, or a, uh, what, what, what is PETA? What even is PETA? People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals End Speciesism. Interesting front page. I'm gonna just Google this real quick. What is PETA? I just want a definition, really, because I, these are all various news websites we've been to, but this is, like, it's an animal rights organization. It's a non-profit. So it's a charity. All right, it's a charity. Not one of on my shout-out lists, though. What is animal rights, they say? People who support animal rights recognize that all animals have inherent worth, a value completely separate from their usefulness to humans. We believe that every being with a will to live has the right to live free from exploitation and suffering. Moral? Okay, but not practical. Animals don't belong in the closet. Either ditch fur and leather. I gotta say, I agree with the message. I think we should ditch fur and leather, like... There are perfectly fine alternatives that won't shit on the economy, and like it's just an unnecessary cruelty to skin animals and stuff. Like, uh, you know, I, I actually, I actually agree with that message. Ditch fur and leather. Talking about like farms though and domestic animals, it's a bit different. You know, wild animals. Maybe we should leave them be. I talked about this more in my um, zoos stream. I should really mention, guys. If you want more info on the wild animals, because I'm really focusing on farm and domestic animals for this stream, I highly recommend you go check out my Our Zoos and Aquariums Ethical Stream, because this entire stream was about wild animals being confined and kind of, is it right for us to protect them, but also confine them, or should we let them be free and let nature take its course? It's a very difficult question that doesn't really have a concrete answer. You could go either way. Um, but yeah, I'll look Platy's premiering. Man, there's some cool stuff I want to check out here. I'll check that out later. Um, but yeah... So, PETA, however, says, um, here are a few ways of understanding this vibrant, exciting movement. Can't help noticing the, uh, rainbow flag. Interesting inclusion there. It's a philosophy. Animal rights is based on ethical and moral philosophy. It has been discussed by some of the world's most influential think thinkers, from historical figures such as Pythagoras and Leonardo da Vinci. What didn't they talk about? What didn't they talk about? Who embraced vegetarianism to Jeremy Bentham, the founder of the utilitarian school of philosophy, who famously identified animals' capacity for suffering as the characteristic that gives them a right to equal consideration. Consideration, yes. Practice. The question is not can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? It's an interesting perspective. Can they reason? No. Can they talk? Kind of. Can they suffer? Yes. All animals have the ability to suffer in the same way and to the same degree as humans do. That's just not true. Neurologically speaking, that is false. I want, I want, like, and I want, like, to be proven wrong here. But, like, that is false. Same degree as human infants? Yeah? As human adults? No. 
No. Just neurologically, scientifically proven no. Right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But, like, I'm actually just going to Google that and see what other articles say, because I'm pretty sure that's just not true. Do all animals have the ability to suffer in the same way and to the same degree that humans do? Question mark. I need to know. Is that actually true or not? All that's coming up is fucking PETA. They've clearly copy-pasted this catchphrase. Some saying they don't. So what's the atheist who's pushing the problem evil based on animals? would have to show things that animals have a third, third order of pain awareness. Some people say yes or no. Why, why isn't there like a scientific, like... Do they? I, do they or do not? It shouldn't be that hard. They feel pain, pleasure, fear, frustration, loneliness, and familial love. I don't think they do. Maybe familial love with some species. I don't think they feel frustration and loneliness. I think they feel pain, pleasure, and fear. Um, but I don't think it goes a lot further than that. I think they can feel anger. I think they can feel remorse. Well, sadness. I think of your happiness. I don't think it goes much more in depth than that. It's nothing like human adults. And correct me if I'm wrong. Because I really don't think they do. But I could be wrong. Whenever we consider doing something like that with interfere with their needs, we are morally obligated to take them into account. We do have more power. We do have more responsibility as a result. Alright, sure. In his book, Animal Liberation, the philosopher Peter Singer states that the basic principle of equality does not require equal treatment. It requires equal consideration. This is an important distinction when talking about animal rights. People often ask if animal rights means that animals should have the right to vote or drive a car. Of course, that would be silly because those aren't rights that would benefit animals. Duh. And this is, again, why I'm an animal welfare activist, not an animal rights activist. Like, animals don't need the same rights as humans. They don't. They're incapable of voting or driving a car. That's just not a thing. But animals have the right not to suffer at the hands of humans to live their lives free from suffering and exploitation because they have an interest in doing so. Not true. Animals don't have an interest in doing so because they are not able to comprehend the bigger picture. They ha we're not going to be able to read this article and agree with that. Animals will individually want to not feel bad and not be harmed. That's it. They don't have an interest, some geopolitical, you know, uh, mass movement interest in not suffering. That's, no, they're, they're, they're like children. They, they they can only consider and understand themselves. I, I think some animals are capable of empathy, some of the adult ones maybe, but like only to other animals. Very rarely with humans, maybe with like close bonds with humans, you know, but like, ah, uh, not technically true. Someone fact check this, please. Like, if I'm wrong, correct me, but it doesn't seem true to me. That is the difference between equal consideration and equal treatment. Okay. It's intuitive. You don't have to be a philosopher to not hurting animals is wrong. Duh. At its core, animal rights is simple. It's about being kind to others, whether they're members of our own species or not. I should zoom in so you guys can see this better. Uh, almost everyone cares about animals in some context, whether it's a beloved family companion, an irresistibly cute kitten, or a majestic wild, wild animal seen in a documentary. After all, we each have some built-in capacity for empathy and compassion, as can be seen from the links that children often go in order to help animals. And that's true. That is, humans are social animals, humans are political animals, as... Correct me if I'm wrong, that was actually Aristotle who said that, isn't he? Humans are political animals, which is translated to social in the modern sense, but yeah. Humans are also political animals, but yeah. Um, logically and morally, there's no reason to differentiate in the way we treat animals we share our homes with and those who are farmed for food. They're all individuals with the same capacity to feel pain and fear. <coughs> Excuse me. Animal rights helps us to look past the arbitrary distinctions between different species and rediscover our innate compassion and respect all animals equally. That's just not right though, is it? You're not going to treat a dog the same way you're going to treat a fish, the same way you're going to treat a bacteria. I really think about that for a second. I've heard of them, but I don't actually know what they do. I've heard someone that certain birds don't get depression or something. I like Taco Bell. I've seen you here before, a long time ago, on my FNAF streams, I think. I remember that username from somewhere. Welcome back, buddy. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think animals are capable of feeling, you know, depression, but in a very simplistic way. The way that a child is capable of feeling depression, not an adult. I remember there was a duck or a swan or something that's like it died of depression because some dumbass would be funny to smash their eggs. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's grim! Oh, that's just grim. What the fuck? This is what I'm talking about. That kind of thing should be illegal. You literally murdered a family of children. What the fuck? That's really sad. That's really sad. When it comes to pain, love, joy, loneliness, and fear, a rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy. Each one values his or her life and fights the knife. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't say a rat is the same as a pig or a dog. A pig and a dog are a boy, maybe, but a rat is not equivalent. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, rats are pretty intelligent, but not, not, I don't know, man. All right, even if they are, even if they are, uh, let me just see what they're saying. It's a way of life. There's nothing abstract about animal rights, and there are no barriers to getting involved. Well, there is. Technically, it's all abstract, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. Anyone who cares about animals can start putting these principles to practice every single day with the food they eat, the clothes they wear, and the products they buy. This is the important thing. I don't know why everyone's hating on PETA. I'm sure that behind these words, their actions are absolutely atrocious. But so far, I, I'm, I'm really struggling to disagree with these words. On paper, it all sounds good. I'm, I'm sure there's more to it. But like, this is all, this is all sound, valid argument on paper, in my opinion. Um... But, like, guys, this is the important message to take away from the stream. If you want to make a difference, be careful and selective with the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the products you buy. That is what will make a difference, nothing else. Doesn't matter what theoretical things you are claiming or, you know, posturing about. Take action, alright? This is what will make a difference. These choices are a form of non-violent protest that makes a real difference, both by reducing the profits of corporations that harm or kill animals, and by creating a growing market for cruelty, food, food, fashion, Services and entertainment. Couldn't have summed it better up myself. That's perfect. What is it about Petter that everyone hates? Because now I'm confused. This is all spot on. Um, vegan starter kit. Okay, that's just that's a bit silly. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Eh, I guess. It's a social movement. Like other major social movements, animal rights brings together people from across political, religious, and cultural boundaries to fight against injustice. I'm not sure. Judging by the rainbow flags, I feel like there's a lot of people who'd be opposed to this, sadly. Um... <laughs> It's about, yeah, and like those moons, it's also about fairness. Only prejudice allows us to deny the, the that we deny the rights that we have to expect for ourselves, whether it's based on race, gender, sexual orientation, or species. Gender is completely made up. I'm just gonna throw that out now. There, like gender is completely fictitious. Race, sexual orientation, and species are the only things that actually like exist outside of some like theoretical argument. I feel like it's been a while since I made a hot take, so I'm just gonna make an exception for gender here because. Oh man, I like I'm not like anti LGBTQ or anything, but I'm not sure if I'm an ally either because um, this is off topic. I shouldn't talk about it. But I was just gonna say like that issue specifically seems really contrived in a way that isn't like all of the other ones, and it seems like it has the most toxicity with it, which just kind of puts me off even engaging with it. Because as a straight cisgender. Uh, heterosexual man who's also white, not disabled, whatever other minorities I'm not a part of, you know, like, I feel like I am not qualified to talk about it because I don't have any lived experience of these, uh, you know, people. Which is, like, a real thing, like, the tangible thing. Um, you know, racism, sexism, homophobia. You see this? Racism, race, sexism, and homophobia, sexual orientation. There's no genderism. That's not in there, because it's not real. It's not a thing. It's just like sexism with extra steps or something. It's just like, it's just like, you know, oh, oppressed gamers, but with like extra mental gymnastics. Someone prove me wrong, please. Oh man. I think I just still don't understand that one. Anyway, it's weird though, because LGBTQ includes both of these together. And it's like this one, this one makes sense to me. This one doesn't. I don't know what that about. Alongside the struggles against racism, sexism, and homophobia, there's a struggle against speciesism. Discrimination against other beings on the basis of their species. I call bullshit. I was just gonna say, actually. I think, uh, people who are, like, uh, queerphobic or, like, I don't know, racist to trans people, whatever the word is, transphobic. That's just, uh... Wouldn't that just be... Oh, there's, there's a word. There's a thing for people who are, um... Disabled. <laughs> no offense, trans people, but... Technically, gender dysphoria is a mental illness. So, if you're discriminating against them, it's just the same as discriminating against anyone who has a mental, like, sickness or, like, disability. I'm pretty sure it counts as a disability. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, like, given its debilitating effect on uh, the psyche, I would say that gender dysphoria counts as a disability. I'm not really sure. That's the science. Let's stop going towards that. I'm getting just sidetracked. But I think it's this speciesism thing is kind of bullshit. I think it's, like... Like, I think the, f the fact that the thing is, it is just fact. Like, it's in nature that different species have different capabilities. We as humans are literally built and evolved to be more capable than other species of other things. It's not racist to say, oh, we're better than them. Like, it's literally fact. You know, like, spe you know, there are some exceptional examples 
of chimpanzees and dolphins and elephants, you know, communicating and even building, but it's nothing compared to adult humans. It's not, it's not the same. And, you know, it's not speciesist just to not give them human rights. It's, I used to be silly. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Not the best quote I would pick. It's the way forward. Societies evolve and come fairer all the time. Uh, I would say we're actually going backwards in some ways, but sure. Despite all the people who say change will never happen, most countries in the world have outlawed human slavery and child labour. Recognise the rights of animals in the next stage in a process towards a fairer world. Uh, that's not really a logical next step. As biologists and animal behaviorists learn more about animals' intelligence and the complexity of their lives, there's even less excuse for treating them as commodities rather than the sensitive individuals they are. Most of us grew up eating meat, true, wearing leather, no, and visiting zoos, sadly, no. Yet, as we've, again, that goes back to uh, episode 49, guys. If you're going to want to check out episode 49 of Debate Direct, I will keep plugging this because it's actually really relevant and I didn't even realize it's all connected back to the zoo and aquarium, like, stream. Check it out. Um... Yet we've made the mental shift towards a way of life that respects animals, so society as a whole must outgrow the unethical mindset that animals are here for us to use and kill as we please. That's not, I mean, kind of, but like, there's an in-between. I feel like this is too far into the animal rights, like, activist argument. I, I, I don't hate pets are based on this, but I think their actions uh, are more, like, tragic. Like, in terms of the, what there was, they're just a bit of, you know, hippies, basically, but... They're not sensitive individuals. They're not, like... If I say this, I'm going to get cancelled. Do I say it? No, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. But, like, um, <laughs> that's too much. But they're not sensitive individuals. Like, certain humans. Certain Twitter-using humans, maybe. No, 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 there we go. Twitter users are pretty sensitive. Um, the greatness of a nation is more progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. You're quoting Gandhi? Do you have any idea who Gandhi is? He's not exactly the pinnacle of progressivism, I will say. Gandhi was kind of awful. Um, I'm pretty sure he was incredibly sexist. He abused several um, women and young girls. Uh, wasn't didn't, Was he also, like, like pro-violence or something? He was, like, one of the people who was involved in, like, liberating India from the British Empire, which was unsuccessful, by the way. India was just liberated because the British Empire decided to leave because it stopped being profitable, I think. Which I guess he kind of contributed to, but, like, don't quote Gandhi. Gandhi's not, he's not, like, at the pinnacle of, I don't know, I don't know that much about Gandhi, but I've never heard good things about him from either leftists or rightists, you know, like... Yeah, this is very, this is a bit weird, I'm gonna not lie, I mean, I think the, um, apparel of these uh, young ladies is a little bit weird, but also, like, it's just, like, animals aren't equal to humans, they just aren't, like, that's, that's a bit too far, um, I've heard a lot of horror stories about PETA, like, euthanizing animals or something, which literally goes against their message, so they're not even, like, they're not even, like, being honest. They're completely lying about what they do. I'm gonna... No, I'm not gonna donate. I'm gonna slowly back out. I'm not gonna worry about them. Um, there's two more articles I got here. Uh, but I'm gonna go on a break, alright? So I'm gonna give you guys some time to chat. I need to go AFK, get something to eat, get something to drink, go to the toilet, that kind of thing. So if you guys need to go AFK for any reason, now is the best time. Before you do, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the bell so that you get notified when I stream. You'll never miss a stream, seriously. And uh, yeah, uh, share this with your friends. The support is very much appreciated. Share the links in the description below. Today's charity channel goes to St. Jude's Hospital. If you guys don't know them, basically, this is the uh, FNAF charity. Um, <laughs> I found this through a lot of FNAF streamers. Uh, these guys find, uh, are working to try and find cures and, you know, ways to help children with cancer. And not only are they super effective in, you know, um, improving cancer research, finding treatment, and ultimately a cure to cancer. Um, you know, you can read about their history and everything here. There's so much information. They share the research with the entire world. So, all, all humanity and everyone can benefit from the progress that they've done. So, yeah, go check them out. Go donate. It goes towards a very positive cause. Um, and yeah, uh, my social media is a link below if you want to join the discord server or anything like that It's all there um, And uh, yeah, I will be right back guys. I'll catch up with chat when I'm back. I'll see you in a moment, okay? Stay hydrated. It's not the end of the stream yet. It's not the end of the stream yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll be right back
Enjoy the music.
Hello! Just meeting the desktop because again, I'm not wearing headphones, so you're hearing them through the speakers now. I hope that sounds better. Has the audio balance been good so far? Let me check that actually. Just meeting the desktop. <laughs> End speciesism. Man. And calls it either ditch fur and other. I got. It's not equivalent. Seems like, uh. I mean, rats are pretty. Did mm. you mean B stars, LMF? Ugh. No Seems like the music's been too quiet, but that's fine by me. Better too quiet than too loud. So anyways, what have I missed in chat? <clears throat> Tell the audio balance is a problem, but if it's fine for you guys, then it's fine for me. So, um... First of all, I got some lentil chips. Mm. They're very nice. Let me check them out. <laughs> I also got some water. And yeah, my parents just got back, just as I was doing the stream break. It was perfect timing, they've just come back from shopping. Mmm. Tanuki Mario Petter? Oh, what did they do? Is it porn? <laughs> I'll look it up, hold on. Oh no. What? Peta attacks Nintendo over fur wearing Mario. It's just a skin, guys. It's a bloody video game. And this is one of the things I was going to mention. What about, like, in fiction, you know? Fiction is a place where dangerous concepts can be safely explored, and we should use that to our advantage. Like... In Minecraft, you can set animals on fire and kill them where they stand. I do it all the time, but it's just a video game. It's not real, and I'm aware of that. You know, I wouldn't do that in the real world. No? <clears throat> Man. But, like, yeah, it's just silly. It's just silly. Hmm. Alright, boys. The stream's gone on way longer than I thought it would, but I'm not complaining. So, I'm going to end it by looking at the last two articles kind of briefly, because I feel like we've gotten two more extreme perspectives and two, you know, balanced perspectives. It's been pretty interesting. So, the BBC, same people behind Bite Size, except this is for adults, I think, says that there's much disagreement as to whether non-human animals have rights and what is meant by animal rights. There's much less disagreement about the consequences of accepting that animals have rights. I'm not going to read out everything word for word because I've already done that plenty and it's a lot of it's the same stuff, but you get the idea, so... I'll link this if anyone is interested. But yeah. Moral, humane, principles. Right and wrong. But yeah. For animal rights activists, it makes no difference if the animals are given five star treatment throughout their lives and then kill humanity without any fear or pain. Which can be done. You can kill animals without fear or pain if you just, like, I think if you just inject them with something, like put them to sleep, like morphine, and then you, like, slice their throat. I know it sounds grim, but it's like, that's the most humane way of doing it. And there might be an even more humane way of doing it, not gonna lie, before you cut them up. But, yeah. Accepting the doctrine of animal rights means no experiments, no breeding or killing animals for food or clothes or medicine, no use of animals for hard labor, no selective breeding for any reason other than the benefit of the animal, no hunting, no zoos or use of animals in entertainment. Imagine a world with all of that as law, that'd be quite radical. Mm. Yeah, 
this is a topic that's avoided by philosophers because the consequences limit humanity and um, you know it defies common sense it defies common sense um, and again different animals have, should probably have different rights you know dogs and cats aren't the same as you know um, fish and you know squids are they but yeah here's a grossly oversimplified you know animal rights argument mm-hmm and the, the 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 thing is, there's no distinction between human, and you know, and and um, non-human animals. Adult mammals are really the focus, which is weird. Like, what about what about reptiles? We could leave out birds. What about the fish? You know, what about whales? Whales are pretty intelligent. Yeah, it's this idea of inherent value that our gym boy didn't agree with. But yeah, there's also a case against, you know, okay, that is just ridiculous. Who says that? That sounds like a weird religious thing. They weren't put on earth to serve human beings. That'd be silly. I would agree with some of this though. Why has it got animals don't think twice? Animals do think. No, that, that is true. Okay. Like, they've put the dumbest argument here. Animals don't have souls. Animals are not members of the moral community. Animals were put on earth to serve human beings. Animals don't think. Animals don't think. Fuck off. Such dumb arguments. Because I'm actually on that side of the fence, but... This is actually more convincing. Just because this is, like, all the wrong reasons. Thomas Aquinas? Why is everyone citing political philosophers today? They're so boring. They're so boring. Descartes? Oh my god. Saint Augustine? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like Jim again. He's like, oh yes, Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. I had to study every single one of these names that came up, guys. Last year, first year degree, history, BA on um, political philosophy, which I didn't sign up for. It was the only course I studied which I didn't sign up for, but I was forced to do because there were no spaces left on any of the other courses, and I had to fill that gap, and it sucked. It was so dry. I'm kind of glad I've learned the context behind these guys, but the teaching was so boring. It was just absolute trash. Philosophy is such a garbage subject. Like, guys, if you ever, ever, ever get the option to study philosophy, don't. It is the most pointless topic ever. It is literally the speculation of like, hmm, but are we real? You know, is killing people wrong? Yeah, it is. And it's like the musings of like primitive men from like hundreds of years ago and somehow the ones from thousands of years ago managed to have more common sense than ones from hundreds of years ago. They're just so disconnected from reality man, I hate all of them, except Aristotle who was pretty based, but stupid. <coughs> Chin rubbing simulator, Matt what are you thinking? You know when people do this, when they're thinking, I was just doing it like a double. That's a thing I do. I'm thinking so hard. I'm doing the thinking thing multiple times. Is this not a joke that anyone's got? Hmm, if you killed someone, did you actually kill them? Right? This is the exact trash that philosophers would come out with. Instead of having a really interesting, like, discussion based in reality, so some weird theoretical shit. Because right? um, that's actually an interesting question, Taco Bell. Like, in terms of practicality, actually, even if you kill someone... People say that every person lives and dies twice. Once, you know, physically, organically, in reality as we are, and the second time in memory, you know. Could be real, Chief. Some people are still alive, even though they've already died. People who have become famous because of what they said or did in history. People who are so well known that they are still alive in memory. Hitler is alive in memory, sadly. Uh, but, you know, so is, um, is Martin Luther King still alive? I don't think he is, no. Martin Luther King's still alive, in memory, you know? Um, all of these people we just talking about, all these people are dead. Aristotle's been dead for a long time, but he still lives in memory. He had, like, you know, a profound impact on 
you know, politi- politics and philosophy and all the other subjects that he studied, like he, he, like that individual had so much impact on history. It's kind of insane. You know, he's basically the chosen one. But yeah. Um. So, you get the idea. <coughs> There's a whole definition here of a moral community. A moral community is apparently a group of beings who live in a relationship with each other and use and understand moral concepts and rules. This is something that animals are incapable of doing, but humans can. Although, uh, you can kind of include, I guess, an animal in this. If you have a household with a pet cat or dog, but they don't really respect it because they don't really know it. Animal cats and dogs, they just do what they want, really. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, who puts a dog to death for biting someone? That's just fucked up. But yeah, it's like, you know, humans are members of the moral community, animals aren't, you know? Animals don't have rights against other animals, exactly. But it's like, it's just kind of absurd because, you know, why should humans have beings of obligations towards animals? If animals have obligations to other animals or other human beings, exactly. You know, if animals aren't going to fulfill their end of the deal, then we're not going to give it to them. And that's fine, because they're just not built that way. Animals aren't humans, they're just they're a completely different thing. It's not like humans to humans, you know, like animals, yeah, they, they, they don't have the same... They aren't capable of morals, they aren't capable of, of, of thought. Yeah, some very interesting articles here. Um, but yeah, some people argue, of course, speciesism. Throwing the ism in there. Marginal people, what is this? Wait, what, wait, what do they mean? They don't, not to denigrate this? What's a marginal person? Oh, man. So they make an exception for humans without, you know, moral judgment with severe mental defects in a coma, babies, senile people. Oh, wow. I hadn't thought of that. This is some deep shit. We've already kind of looked at everything else and all of the other arguments here. Although this has got some really interesting like academic stuff, so I'd highly recommend reading the BBC article. But I actually want to give like a full read through of this last paragraph. This is very interesting. This is an argument we haven't thought about yet. The problem of marginal people. The phrase marginal people or marginal human beings is unpleasant. We use it here only because if you read the literature of animal rights, you will encounter it often, and it's important to know what it means. We do not intend to denigrate the status or worth of any human beings by using it here. The problem with the line of thought in the section above that it takes away rights from many human beings as well as from non-human animals. So the when rights conflict? I didn't read this, what does it mean? Animals with rights must be treated as ends in themselves. They should not be treated as others by others as means to achieve their ends. From this fundamental right comes other rights. Particular species only get relevant and useful rights to animals don't get the rights to human beings get. For example, animals don't get want or get the right to vote, obviously. Okay. The mineral in our pistol, the worst off principle. Damn. It's not utilitarian. Okay. But here's the thing. This is because some human beings, babies, senile people, people with some severe mental defects and people in a coma, don't have the capacity for free moral judgment either, and by this argument, wouldn't have any rights. Some philosophers are prepared to argue that, in fact, such marginal human beings don't have rights, but most people find that conclusion repellent. The argument can be rescued by rewriting it like this. If an individual is a member of a species that lacks the capacity for free moral judgment, then he or she does not have moral rights. All non-human animal species lack the capacity for free moral judgment, therefore, non-human animals do have moral rights. Boom. These people are members of a species that does have free moral judgment, so they do have rights. But this is not an argument. It's a statement that human beings have rights and non-human animals don't, which is pure speciesism and hardly persuasive. It's also vulnerable to the probably unlikely arrival of a species of extraterrestrial creatures who demonstrate the capacity for free moral judgment. So, babies, senile people, people with severe mental defects, and people in a coma, do they get the same rights if they're incapable of free moral judgment? 
I think you need to create entirely new laws to clarify this stuff, and hopefully they do exist, because think about it this way. Babies are just re underdeveloped human beings. They're not finished yet. They're a work in progress. At the moment, no, they're not capable of judgment, but they will be. And I think every it's every uh, ba it's, it's the responsibility of every parent to take care of their baby or guardian or if all else fails an orphanage. I talked about this in a previous debate there, I think, um, you know, but it's like a baby, you know, you can't expect, a, a, you know, a human to come out of the womb fully developed. A baby, or even a child, or even a teenager, anyone under the age of 18, give or take, is, you know, still developing. So I think, to a level of extent that is inverse to their age, we should make an exception for them. Because, obviously, babies are, you know, still developing. And, you know... With all the responsibility that over them, the parents also have the total power over them as well. And, you know, the responsibility to raise them probably in the power to, you know, make that baby, you know, what they want them to be and really just, you know, do what they like with them, basically. Obviously, nothing that violates any other common laws, like, like any kind of abuse or neglect. Senile people, again, I would say that um, I would actually remove the right to vote from someone who was senile or someone with a severe mental defect. Um, again, I think with groups like that, it's like, sadly, they can't really be trusted to make proper decisions, or they're just incapable, and in that case, I think it's more those things like, well, okay, someone has to take responsibility for them since they're unable to take responsibility for themselves, and I think this would extend to people in a coma as well, so for all of these other than babies, maybe the responsibility of the government, or maybe friends or family, or whatever, I guess it's all kind of the same, really, but it's like, I don't think I'd take away their rights, if someone is in a coma, there's a possibility that they will receive their rights once they're out of the coma. Um, but again, severe mental defects, senile people, you know, those are people who need help. I would, I mean, I would argue that, um, okay, yeah, they don't get all the rights, but they're still, you know, um, a living being, a living human being, um, that will, you know, um, used to or will have, or does still have some aspects of reason and judgment that make humans, you know, unique. You know, just because they don't have free moral judgment doesn't make them equivalent to animals. Like, think about it. A senile person isn't, like, in terms of brain capacity, they're not the same as, like, an animal. Um, I feel like it's, it's, it's a really, really unclear thing because, again, it's really hard to define specific, like, criteria, but, like, I mean, I'm probably on board with the speciesist argument, which is unpersuasive and repellent. That's not right. Just to say, oh, well. The thing is, though, genetically, we are unique from animals. So maybe I'm a speciesist, you know? I'm a speciesist, guys. I think that's bull, though. I think, I think you know... I, th I, think, I think humans incapable of free moral judgment, um, you know, are our responsibility, because they're still people. And they're still more advanced than animals. I don't know. I, f I, f I feel like this needs more specifying clarity. I'm really not sure. But it's a very interesting thing to talk about. Because there are so many different facets to this argument. Chat slowed down. I don't know if anyone is still watching. But if you guys have anything to say, do say so in chat. Any arguments, I'm just going to keep going and end the stream, alright? Because we've been going for almost three hours. But I'm going to finish off with animal rights. Definition, issues, and examples. This is the last one that I'm going to link because it looks pretty good, and, uh, yeah, right there in the description. The, uh, this is, again, covering anything we've already even looked at. The idea of giving rights to animals has long been contentious, but a deep look at the reasoning behind the philosophy reveals ideas that aren't all that radical. Well, some of them are pretty radical. But, yeah, um, there's a difference between animal rights and animal welfare. And, you know, again, I think I would agree that animal rights are moral principles grounded in the belief that non-human animals deserve the ability to live as they wish without being subjected to the desire. Okay, well, yes and no. <clears throat> I think I'm more on board with, like, animals shouldn't have to suffer more than they would naturally. But I think, uh, you know, we don't owe animals any particular benefit. And the benefits that we do give animals are in return for their use to us. And I think that's just a fair trade-off. Animals, you know, aren't capable of choice, so we have to choose for them. You know? And of course, it's about human rights. Um, you know, basic tenets of what makes humans' lives worth living. And rights are something similar only for non-human animals. And I'd say animal, but again, we're just not the same. It has to be, I'm speciesist. I don't think being speciesist is a bad thing, though. I think that's just true. It's not like being racist. Because, like, 
literally the only difference between different races is like skin color. It's like caused by exposure to the sun or something, you know? Like with animals, from like completely different DNA. But you know, it's like all these changes that some of the extremes want would be really extreme. Like the, the radicals, like I, I don't think it would benefit anybody that well. And here again, difference between animal welfare and rights. So the philosophy is that, you know, um, set of practices pros and cons again pretty good summary i'm not going to read through all of it but yeah you know um should the rights of animals be recognized animal exploitive industries would disappear as would a host of environmental problems they cause including water pollution air pollution greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation halting the widespread use of animals would also eliminate the systematic cruelty and denial of choice that animal industries perpetuate the physical and psychological strain endured by animals in places like factory farms has reached a point that many consider to be unacceptable to say the least Animals are mutilated by humans in several different ways, including castrations, dehorning, and cutting off various body parts, usually without the use of anesthetic. That's wrong. That's screwed up. We should not be doing that. Many species never see the outdoors except the way into the slaughterhouse. That's a yikes. But yeah, there's, uh, you know, a lot of mistreatment. However, there are arguments against. Simply say that, you know, factory fine for animal products is a multi-billion dollar industry. Um... You know, there'll be economic issues with, like, unemployment and possibly inflation, you know, if, um, you know, we, we, we stop, like, farming animals and whatnot. It's basically what it's saying. Many people depend upon animal exploitation for work. That's the thing. Um, unfortunately, jobs in industrial meatpacking facilities are also known to be some of the most dangerous in the U.S. But some families, you know, uh, their livelihoods depend on animal exploitation. So, it's a difficult one, because, like... Hopefully, new jobs could be created in alternative sectors, but if they're not, or it might take a while, people could starve, people could end up, you know, really, really broke. Scientists believe the world is undergoing a mass extinction event driven by human activity. Since 1900, an estimated 543 species of vertebrates have gone extinct, or the number could be much higher. This is just sadly a, a fact. Human, you know, human development has, has, you know, created an extinction event. A study conducted in 2020 predicts that one-fifth of all species would be threatened by extinction by the middle of the century. That's a yikes. Why are animal rights important? Animal rights are important because they represent a set of beliefs that counteract inaccurate yet long-held assumptions that animals are nothing more than mindless machines. That is not true. Animals are not mindless machines. They're somewhere in between that and humans. And people just can't understand that balance. They're like babies. You know, it's the best I can think of, like babies. Again, this is a podcast by Reen Descartes. Weird name. Perception mammals as unthinking, unfeeling means gene justified using them for human desires. We're in today's world where farm mammals outnumber those in the wild, and a majority of these farm mammals are forced into harsh conditions of factory farms. That's not right. We should at least treat them humanely. I don't have a problem with animals being farmed, but it has to be done properly, because that's just not okay. Farmed animals outnumber those in the wild, but the science is increasingly clear. The animals we eat, the animals we use in labs, the animals we provide with clothing, whose backs we ride upon, have all been found to possess more cognitive complexity, emotions, and overall sophistication than has long been believed. This sophistication renders animals more susceptible not into physical pain, but also to psychological impacts caused by the habitual denial of choice. Awareness of their own subjugation forms sufficient reasoning to rethink the ways animals are treated in Western societies. Which is true, but we are the only ones who have to rethink and re-reason. Animals don't have reason. They just, they can't really do, they don't have much in the way of reason. All they think is, you know, food shelter, survival, you know, they're not capable of political discussion, they're not capable of understanding legal systems, they're not capable of, you know, um, <laughs> you know, things like voting, and this is where I take issue with animal rights activists, I'm all for animal welfare, but I really think, like, you know, it, we have to choose for them, and that means they're never going to get exactly what they want, because animals are basic creatures, they're not, you know, as, you know, they do think and feel, and we can sort that out, but, you know, animals can't choose for themselves. They're not that advanced, so we have to choose for them, and, you know, we have to make some tough choices. <clears throat> but, yeah, here it's talking about, like, you know, movements and, and, and legal stuff, and, you know, man. If, if the animal rights movement achieved its goals and such, it would look very different to today. But the global environment would be far less impacted. There's a lot of things, a lot of small things which would change, though, and I am all for this. I think definitely, you know, there's no need to kill animals for clothing or products. I think testing, you know, can be managed. 
I think uh, we need to fish more sustainably, farm more sustainably, reduce pollution. This, again, it connects to wider issues with the environment, wider problems that we as a society have with, you know, uh, the environment. And, you know, that's just that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, and I mean, again, there are vegetarian and potentially even vegan alternatives which might be sustainable in the future. I think it's still developing, but I think, you know... It would be worth reducing how much meat we eat and buying anything, you know, that contributed towards animal cruelty. They don't even numb the pain? Sadly, no. In many cases, too many. They just don't even numb the pain. DJ's just been listening. He doesn't have anything to say. DJ's just been listening. Learning, hopefully. I hope you guys have learned a lot this stream. I feel like I have, so... Conclusion. A world in which animals are free from human exploitation still seems far off, but thanks for advocacy campaigns for raising awareness of the harmful conditions they experience in places like factory farms, animals may one day experience more fair treatment at the hands of people. And that's the end. That is all of today's articles, fellas. So, I want to see what these are about. But, uh, yeah. If you have enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, join my Discord. Link's in the description. Check out the articles linked in the description. Um, go donate to St. Jude's. Positive cause. Yeah. I think the last thing I have to say is this. What rights should animals have? I believe the existing laws that prevent animal cruelty, neglect, and abuse need to remain in place. I believe animals should have basic rights to quality of life. I'm talking enough food, a good amount of space, you know, healthy kind of like maybe even social environment for some animals, other animals and other humans they can socially interact with. I would say that they definitely deserve um, the right to... Thinking about this one here. I think, again, animals deserve the rights to not be tortured, neglected, abused, maltreated, but I wouldn't say that they deserve the right to freedom. Freedom of religion, voting, doesn't even apply. They're not capable of that, you know? I would say that this might be speciesist, but I would say that fundamentally, animals, are, you know, with a few, you know, exceptional, you know, exceptions um, that are on the level with human infants, uh, animals are not capable of cognitive reasoning on the level of humans. They are capable of thinking, they are capable of feeling, but in a very basic way that is little more advanced than the artificial intelligences of today. What I would say is this, um, forget theory, forget like, you know, practice, oh, which rights should they not, should not have. In different situations are going to call for different things, but I'm not against farming. Vegetarianism is probably the way forward, and I'm all for it and veganism. However, unless there's a way we can sustainably manage a nutritious diet, I don't think we should completely make any form of meat eating illegal. There's also a lot of economic stuff riding on that, so even if we do outlaw that, it needs to be a slow change. That is not going to be happening in my lifetime. Um, I think I have no problem with the existence of farms for fish, cows, sheep, pigs, chickens, any of that, but it needs to be done unsustainably and humanely. You can put animals to sleep and kill them quietly and peacefully. You can, you know, farm them without making the slaughterhouses these horrific, painful, and scary experiences for the animals, you know. You can keep them in spaces that are open and organic and sustainable and still feed everybody if we change our habits. I think we should completely outlaw and ban any form of, you know, um, killing of animals purely for the use of clothing. I think skinning animals and getting their fur and like making taxidermy is, is disgusting. I think it's repellent. I think it's something that needs to be left in history and, you know, not continue going forward. I think that, um, you know, um... I don't think there's any problem with keeping animals as pets domestically. I think as long as you are providing the treatment that they deserve, the food, shelter, care, all of that, I think that is completely fine because that is a give and take between you and the animal. You own them, they are your property, but you are also providing everything for them. So, you know, it's all good. They're not going to mind. They don't have that level of cognitive reasoning. And if they want the few exceptions that do, in most cases, they will have provided a bond with you. You know, people bond with their dogs, their cats, and, you know, that goes both ways because that's, you know, unconditional love. It's a beautiful thing. I think um, when it comes to farms, as I've outlined, just make it sustainable, make it, you know, uh, humane. I think with products, completely just get rid of it. As with testing... I would rather animals die than humans die. I think it needs to be moderated by, you know, the governments and, you know, 
regulators need to keep an eye on things, but I think we need to not, you know, overdo it, if you will, with animal testing. I know it's a tough choice, it's a lesser evil, but I think when it comes to product testing, we should test on animals instead of humans, just in case. And I think there are animals with sufficient DNA that's similar to ours for the information to be valid. I'm looking at chimpanzees, I'm looking at bananas, I'm kidding, not bananas, but, uh, well, there's a, you know, uh, you know, what was the other animal, was it like fish or something? Something that was, it was not like chimpanzees, it was pigs? No, it was chimpanzees and pigs, I don't know what fish from. But yeah, I think, I think there's a way of doing it which is humane. Um, and again, just use anesthetics, you know, numb the pain. We do that for humans, why not do it for animals as well, okay? These kind of things can be afforded if, you know, the deeper problems with our society and economy were managed better by the governments and those in power. There is money for this, and your money is completely, you know, made up anyway, but yeah. Um, Last thing I'd have to say is about wild animals. I've talked a lot about domestic animals and farm animals. I highly recommend you go check out Debate Direct episode 49, Are Zoos and Aquariums Ethical? For more info on wild animals, because I really delved into wild animals here, and I didn't as much here, but I will say this, you know, things like hunting, not okay. Really, that shouldn't be legal. I just think that's not okay, you know. Um, at least have it be licensed or something. Um, I would say... You know, for wild animals, it's a tough choice. I think it ultimately comes down to, can we do conservation ethically? Can we protect animals in environments where they won't suffer neglect and abuse and cruelty? Can we have zoos that, you know, are actually conservation projects instead of trapping animals in concrete cages for the entertainment of audiences behind iron bars? And I think if we can do that, then go for it but if we can't we're better off taking the hands off and letting nature take its course this is connected to a whole bunch of different issues it's not as simple as saying one thing and applying it in every situation pollution is a factor you know um population thing is a factor um you know certain species we need to protect for our own personal gain as well as just for nature's sake rainforests we need to stop deforesting because there are animals and plants as well plants which aren't really sentient or conscious in the same way, but that's like something we haven't even touched on today, you know, which, you know, need um, to be, you know, found and researched because, you know, the cure for cancer or whatever could be in there, you know, medical advances are all made from like stuff from rainforests. Hell, that's a whole other stream, guys. Do plants have feelings? Are we going to have to stop eating plants? Are we going to just have to not eat anything because it will hurt another living being? I don't think even the vegans are going to go that far. But yeah, factory farms can be brutal. You're absolutely right, Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell, ironic. Um, thanks for joining the stream. Desi bananas deserve rest rights. I don't know why I get rest. You mean um, nest rights? Best rights? What do you mean? Bruh. Oh, it just added the entire word. Autocorrect is weird. Don't worry about it. But yeah. Do you think have basic rights for animals like shelter, food, good care is fair? But the things that we do on the Davis animals... Um, don't do should be applied. I'm a bit confused, DJ. What did you mean by that? I think basic rights sounds like shelter, food, good care is fair, but things that we do on a daily basis that animals don't do shouldn't be applied. Applied. Oh, so things that animals don't do shouldn't be applied. Like animals don't farm us. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna have to end the stream now. I'm gonna nice song uh, to finish us off there. I really love the timing on that. So. If you guys are all done, then I'm done. That is everything. All the links are in the description. Uh, I pinned the funny comment. Um, today's QOTV winner, I asked you guys, you know, I asked you guys what rights should animals have? And I think Lucy has won that. I think she gave the most clear, concise, detailed, you know, incisive answer amid her messages. Um, oh man, which, oh, which page do I link? Lucy has a lot of different social media pages. Um, uh, I'm gonna link... She has all kinds. She has Instagram, Tumblr, Redbubble, she has a YouTube channel. Alright, I'm gonna link Lucy's link tree if I can. <laughs> because she's got so many, I just don't know which one. Oh my gosh, okay, okay, alright, let me, let me find it. Let me find it. There it is, yeah. I'm going to link Lucy's YouTube channel because she started becoming active here. And you can find her other social medias through it, I think. Maybe. Somewhere. She originally streamed these on Twitch and she uploaded them 
uh, to YouTube in the descriptions links you can find her tumblr and her Instagram as well She's got a whole bunch of different social medias. You should go check out so link is in the description Lucy you gave some really good in-depth and intelligent answers. I'm gonna give you the shout out and uh, Yeah, I think that will do it for today. Uh, I do use brave. Yes talk about use brave with Ecosia like plug it in You know as an extension Ecosia did a color with Brave, so I switched over. I thought it was a lot better. Although they, they do sadly support cryptocurrency, which is a bit of a yikes, but they're all about privacy, so. Yeah, stay hydrated, and I'll see you on the flip side. Awesome stuff. All right. If that's all, everybody, then... Oh, man, that song ended quickly. Where'd the time go? If, that, if that's all good, then I'm gonna go. Check out Lucy. She won the QOT link in the description. Very talented lady. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna head out. I, th I don't think there's anything else I've got to say. Until the next time, um... I really look forward to doing more debate directs like these. I know we didn't have anyone voice chat, but we had some really good engagement from the live chat. I said I'd go into the uh, Hydration Nation for a voice call at the end, but no one's really volunteered. I don't think anyone's gonna, I don't think anyone's gonna be interested in that. So I'm just gonna leave it. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll go. Stay hydrated.